It's public caucus to order. Today we have Ms. Linda Abley, Mr. Jim Mulligan, and Mr. Tom Preamble from Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development. They're here tonight or this evening to discuss uh, funding sources for the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge Curbs and Sidewalks project. So if you could begin by presenting um, your information and rationale for the funding sources, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, first, I think I should, um, it was very, it was an important decision and to determine what activities we can defund. It wasn't an easy decision, but we went over, the OECD staff went over all the activities and we looked at reasons why we should or should not. So what I did this evening was um, I'm going to give you a short note on each activity that we feel we should de-obligate, okay, and the reasons for it. Um, I'll start with the Vacant Property Review Committee. That was funded in 2012 in the amount of $30,000. <clears> I wrote to, um, from the time it was approved and we received our funding, um, we have not received any correspondence from the Vacant Property Review Committee. So on March 13th, 2000, uh, 2013, I contacted both Donnie King and a vacant property review board member, Mario Savinelli, and explained OECD's concerns that the project was not moving forward. They have not met since 2010. Um, last week, Marie Schumacher expressed her objection not to de-obligate this funding. However, um, if the Vacant Property Review Committee has no future plans to meet, I cannot see keeping this funding in this activity when it could be used on a shovel-ready activity. So that's why we selected the Vacant Property Review Committee to de-obligate. Um, I'm going to, the next is, I'm going to do the West Side Falcons. In 2009, we funded the West Side Falcons for $100,000, and we spent $87,594.28 on field lighting. After that, in 2009, there was a $21,000 balance left over. So four years later, this funding is still sitting there. So last year, in 2011, I'm sorry, in our 2011 action plan, they requested additional funding for paving and a new roof. So um, I contacted City Council and we decided that we would use that 20, the first $21,000 balance in 2009 with an additional $7,000 and a $4,000 to make $32,000 to fund for paving and a new roof. Um, that would be included in the 2011 action plan. I wrote to them several correspondents on November 2nd, 2011, March 21st, 2011. Um, Tom Preamble and I, we met on March 19th, 2012 with Ken Martin concern, concerning the surveys that they need to provide. The West Side Falcons is not located in a low mod area, so they have to take their membership list that consisted of 225 households and get surveys on their in each income. So we met with Mr. Martin on March 19th. On March 21st, we sent him 300 surveys along with the instructions. And I also copied Mr. Loscom on the copy of the letter. September 17th, uh, we wrote another letter inquiring about the surveys and gave him a September 28, 2012 deadline to submit the surveys. The surveys were finally submitted. However, um, by November 15th, we reviewed our, the surveys. There were 225 households on the membership list, and we only received 110 surveys. So that left 115 surveys that were not received. 
And when we do that, we have to calculate that 115 people that are on the membership list as over income. So we calculated the income over the under income and it equaled 35% low mod. You need 51% low mod to be eligible to receive federal dollars when you do the surveys. So with that, we wrote to them on 5, November 15, indicating all this and to provide us with additional surveys. December 6th, um, I provided another letter to the Westside Falcons indicated that as of December 31st, 2012, if we did not hear a response, we'd have to de-obligate the funding. I also wrote personally to Mr. Loscom and I CC'd Mrs. Evans and Mr. Rogan. I know, you know, you want to see the West Falcons, West Side Falcons do their project, but with no response from them, we cannot move forward with the project. As I speak right now, this is an ineligible project to receive federal dollars. So that's why we selected the West Side Falcons. Um, I'll move on to North Scranton Little League. We funded them two th uh, in 2012, $25,000 for playground equipment. <clears throat> now this is a little different than the West Side Falcons because we're not looking at the membership list of the Little League, we are looking at the census track of everyone living in the, around the North Scranton Little League. So if, if one of us lived around in that census track, we'd have to fill out a survey on our income. So just say, if I went knocking on your door and said, would you fill out the survey and give me your income, would you fill it out? So, um, September 12th, 2012, uh, we wrote, we made, we had, um, we wrote to them saying that we'd have surveys available for them with instructions. Uh, October 1st, we met with uh, the representative from the North Scranton Little League concerning the project and re um, requested a response what they were going to do by November 30th, 2012. October 4th, we sent correspondence recapping what we discussed at our meeting on October 1st. Uh, and again, we asked to respond by November 30th. No response was ever received. February 27th, due to no response, we waited until February 27, 2013 to cancel the activity. We'll move on to demolition of hazardous structures. Currently, there's $658,582.77 in the action plan for the demolition of hazardous structures for years 2009, 2011, and 2012. Currently, we have approximately 150000 under contract that, for a demolition that's ongoing right now, that would leave us with um, $508,000 approximately. So we requested City Council to take $200,000 of that, leaving demolition with $308,000 rounding off. With demolition, demolition is a very slow moving process. When we receive addresses from licensing and permits for homes to be demolished. As you know, you just, City Council just passed uh, legislation for us to hire a title search company and an environmental specialist to do core samplings on each house. Currently, we, we're doing 18 title searches on homes that we want to demolish. When we get these 18 title searches back, licensing and permits has to send letters to each lien holder and every person that has an interest in the property. They will have 20 days to respond to see if they have any objection to us demolishing this property. This is where we may go from 18 properties, maybe down to 12 properties, if we have anybody objecting to any of these properties. We have no idea. This is the first time we're doing the title searches. So after the 20 days, then we contact the environmental assessment company 
and they have to do the core samplings on each house. And that, after we get all them back, then we will do our spec book and bid out for the demolition. So you, as you can see, it's not going. The demolition is not going to happen overnight. <clears throat> so this is why I took two hundred thousand off the demolition because three hundred and eight thousand should <coughs> last, you know, maybe another year. I'm not sure. Um, I know everybody wants the demolition. Does not want to touch the two hundred thousand dollars in the demolition. However, we have to look at our priorities, what's important to fund right now in shovel-ready activities, and we also have to look at the timeliness um, problem we had last year. We do not want to have it repeated this year. Uh, November 2nd, or probably November 1st this year, HUD will look at our how much money we have available to fund, and if we, ha we cannot have more than 1.2 times our annual allocation, or we will lose that money. So we just can't hang on to the demolition money as much as, as much as we want it, we have to use it. So that is why um, we selected the projects we did. So I just provided um, City Council with a list of activities that you may want to look at and consider. And I'll go through each one of them, okay? Is that all right with everybody? Okay. Mm -hmm. The first one is the demolition of hazardous structures. The 119,000, that is the one that's under co uh, contract right now. Park enhancements, currently there's $72,594 in there. Currently, um, parks, um, Mr. Dewar and one of my staff members are creating a project for this for the Weston Field. Rockwell Avenue Bridge is $404,796.68. Uh, we've been working with PennDOT, and that should be um, bid out probably by June or July? Probably by June. And we fund 20% of the project, and that's why there's 440. We figure we have enough money in there for that. Um, the next one, the neighborhood police patrol is 150,000. If you recall, um, I transfer uh, quite a lot of uh, neighborhood police patrol to paving, wasn't it? I, I believe it was paving last year. And I left 150,000 in there in the hopes that the neighborhood police patrol would be getting up and going. I'm happy to report three weeks ago, the neighborhood police patrol, we have one police officer on the beat now and another one will start on Tuesday. The um, Catholic Social Service homeless veterans, um, I spoke to them this afternoon. I did write to them for their $1,230.63. They are under contract for $5,000, but they weren't using this $1,200. And they are going to provide me early part of next week with um, back up to that we can use this money and close it out. The next one is the fire station engine company nine, seventy one thousand three oh five. That is under that's under contract with Raymond and Sons and we just picked out the colors for the firehouse and that should begin very shortly. Um, e and T Realty Company, that's the facade program for nineteen thousand nine hundred eighty six dollars and fifteen cents. They've contacted us, and if they haven't begun, they should be begin any day. We have a contract with them. Demolition of hazardous structures is $302,847.97. That is from 2011. I will probably take maybe 50,000 of that to blend in with the first 119 to complete the demolition that's going on right now. Um, the demolition of hazardous structures in-house, $38,710.06. We separated the, the categories because if DPW does any in-house demolition, that category is right there. Um, 
Then another one, 2012, demolition of hazardous structures, 201,507 and seven cents. That's the one that's opened. And that's the, where I was going to take the seven, or well, I, either one, take the 200,000. Scranton Mall Associates, $204,248.30. Um, we usually pay HUD around June, July 24th for our Section 108. The same with the next one, that usually comes around July 24th. So really, we cannot touch that money. Um, reconstruction of city streets and ADA curb cuts, $1,201,92. The paving um, started in April. We are under contract for approximately, I'm rounding it off, about 1.1 million. We, met, we don't know at, you know at this point if there's gonna be any um, unforeseen change orders. Uh, the forestry tree planting, you saw the picture in the paper, that's under contract, that, that started April 9th. Lackawanna Neighbors, they have a balance of $33,133.34. That's under contract, and I believe she's, under, she's about to close on another home there. United Neighborhood Center's Bellevue Youth Program, $2,939.25. That's a public service, and that's under contract. Our condemnation program with United Neighborhood Centers, $72,000. $335.04. That's under contract with United Neighborhood Centers. And that is when, if the city condemns a house and it gets heavier in the winter time when they go out to condemn a house and then we have to put them up in hotel rooms. And we have for three days. Dress for success, uh, we, they just submitted a request for payment and that's being processed as we speak. EOTC 15,000, that is under contract. I sent them a letter on April 16th requesting a status of their project and I received a payment request on April 22nd, 2013. St. Joe's Mother Infant Program, that's a public service and that is under contract for $5,000 and we have a balance of $3,903.86. Now this is the bottom where I'm requesting the transfer. The West Side Falcons, as I speak right now, this 32,000 is not an eligible activity with no surveys. And it is not um, eligible to receive federal dollars. North Scranton Little League, the same. It is not an eligible activity with no surveys. Vacant Property Review Committee is, there hasn't been a meeting. And the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge, you might have seen um, probably three weeks ago or two weeks ago, we, did, we had a legal ad in the paper for an engineer for the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge. We did have from 2006 and 2007, $113,000 that did not need a substantial change to our action plan because that was already in an action plan. So we want to get the ball rolling, so that's why we started to bid the engineering out because that will take probably two months maybe to come under contract, to come under contract and for him design. yeah, to complete the design. So that's it if you have any questions. We could start with uh, Mr. McGough, if you have uh, any questions. Really just two questions. Um, just to reiterate, in your estimation, I'm sorry, in your estimation, there will be sufficient funding for the demolition projects to take us through the year 2013? My professional opinion, if we see, if we have 300, what did I say, $302 to use, what we can do, if I see it going down low, we can do another substantial change when it gets closer to that time. Because we're, we're constantly getting revolving loan money back into the system that we probably can, we don't have enough right now to use, but we, it, I would, this is the way I would go. Okay. And uh, my second question, uh, 
the projects that you're suggesting that we um, transfer funds from those people can if uh, they meet their requirements can apply again for funding for these projects in 2014 correct um, what we've discussed in OECD because of the timeliness problem we have been experiencing over the past several years we're and I need City Council's help on this also we have to look at activities when anybody could submit an application but we need shovel ready activities that are ready to go you, you can't wait three four years you know you you should be honored to get awarded this money get on the stick and get this project moving so yes they can thank you very much that was all I had Mr. Rogan do you have any questions yes a few thank you and thank you so much for coming in on such short notice you've always been uh, very willing to come I wish uh, many of the other department heads <laughs> thank would, you. would take your lead um, just a couple issues that I have now the hundred and thirteen thousand dollars that was allocated in 2006 2007 that's mm -hmm. we still have that those funds correct correct originally when we did I didn't even know we were going to do the Westlock one Avenue bridge up, up until maybe a month or two ago we had all the bridge money that was designated for bridges you could you don't need a substantial change to go from bridge to bridge okay we had this hundred and thirteen thousand in the Rockwell Avenue bridge because we did not know we did not know how much the bridge was going to cost so we finally working with PennDOT we got the estimate of the Rockwell Avenue bridge because we have to pay the city has to pay 20 percent of the complete project so we do feel that we do have enough in the Rockwell Avenue bridge and that's why we took we deducted the hundred and thirteen thousand that was originally designated for the Westlock one Avenue bridge and put it back into where it was supposed to be and that that initial hundred and thirteen thousand would that be enough to cover the engineering studies that are being put uh, it, well, to bed? It, it'll be more than enough it okay. should not be an engineering study should not be that much that part of this will go for the construction because my, my concern is and I don't think there's anyone up here that disagrees that the bridge needs to be repaired um, it certainly does my concern is that if, if we do the transfer today it may be in a few months when because we don't even have a, a, full, a full price yet correct correct my concern is if, if we transfer these funds now we may be asked again in the future to transfer additional funds um, it would seem to make more sense to wait to do the transfer until we had an, an actual price tag and since we already have the hundred and thirteen thousand dollars to get the ball rolling um, seems to me and I don't know if my colleagues would agree or disagree um, that we should leave it on the table until we get you know the, the actual dollar amount we did um, we did meet Tom and I met with uh, the city engineer and right now if with the 287 and the 113 comes to 400,000 and the city engineer estimated that would probably be a good number that would probably be good so but, we we do have an estimate of what it would cost but it could be it could wind up costing a lot more or less correct and personally for me I would rather wait you know since since the funds are already there to start the project which is a good thing um, to get it out to bid and you know get the engineering studies and, and find out what the true cost will be and you know you also mentioned the timeliness issues that in you, the council will always act if there's a, uh, a chance of losing the funds like we did last year mm -hmm. um, you know I remember last year we spoke about it, you sent down legislation I think it passed unanimously to make the change to allocate the additional money for paving so we wouldn't lose it um, could you explain the need to do this now versus waiting you know the two to three months that it's going to take for for the engineering studies to come back well I mean the city engineer gave a professional estimate on what the project was going to cost I mean he's our professional engineer I I can't see why we would wait okay that's all I have <laughs> oh my turn I guess Council, right. I don't know is it just you two that have yes 
Uh, Councilman Moskin, do you have any comments or questions? Yes, thank you. I have a, a couple questions. Uh, <clears throat> does the engineer know, did he give you an estimate how much the engineering cost will be? I think he did. Between 50 and 90. Um, just a couple quick questions on, on this issue and I just have a couple questions on some of the other projects here mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you said these projects are ineligible now uh, basically North Grand Little League West Side Falcons in that aspect if they went out next week and got surveys is that a possibility or is it a done deal well, we've already uh, we have de-obligated it into our IDIS system because um, they were flagged in layman's terms. I don't. Just <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. IDIS is our financial HUD system that we have to insert all our projects into, and HUD probably, I think, back in October made a lot of changes to our financial system that when we fund something, we can't have it sitting around doing nothing. Because, let me take you back, HUD was audited by the Inspector General. And they looked at the IDIS system, and just not Scranton, Pennsylvania, right across the country. And they had to be more proactive looking into the financial system, which is the IDIS system, and get these projects right across the country moving there was too much money laying around in little pots you know three dollars here a hundred thousand dollars there so when in our in scranton's financial system we get flagged when they don't see any activity going so we it was best for us to de-obligate this funding for now but legally it still has to go through city council um. <clears throat> I, I, I understand the timeliness as you explained. I, I'm looking here at the bottom line, West Lachlan Avenue Bridge. There's been funding in there since 2006. Correct. And when the OECD staff sat down, we took that into consideration. That's why we put it in. That's why we pulled it out of there and put it in the Rockwell Avenue Bridge. But when this came up with the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge, I said, well, let's put the 113 that was originally allocated for the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge back in that project. Okay. The, uh, so basically those other two projects are debt issues. How about you, you mentioned revolving funds. Is that something that's possible for we them? Don't, we do, at, at this point of time, we don't have two hundred and eighty thousand dollars to use. No, no, I'm I'm talking about these projects that you're putting out. Yeah, we don't have enough money from there. At two, three, maybe ten thousand dollars. I'd have to check with Mary. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when the West Side Falcons got their lighting in two thousand nine, mm -hmm. did they go through the same process? Yes, they did. We have Do you have copies on. of the, the surveys Correct. And, and the census? Yes. Okay. I, w I would like to, to get a copy of that also. Because I've been told things were a little bit different, and, and I just want to make sure that uh, I haven't mm -hmm. been told the wrong thing. Excuse me? I just want to make sure I haven't been told the wrong thing, you know. Um, question on fire station engine nine line item yes the contract was executed with Raymond and sons for the windows yes do you know if there was an engineering study of the structure of the building done that building has a considerable amount of cracks and settlement and and to put new windows in and have them settle and crack is, is something we had brought up here several months ago that, that should be preempted before any work is is completed I'll respond to that mr. Lawson. okay prior to entertaining any design work for the fire station that you're talking about OECD reached out to the city engineer and it was the city engineers professional opinion that we can go through with the requested application from the fire department 
Okay. Do you have a copy of that? I believe we do. Okay. I'd like to receive a copy in our office. Sure. Okay. Um, the facade for ET Realty, Realty, where is that located? That's on the corner of Franklin, Franklin and Spruce. Spruce. Franklin and Spruce. Okay. Um, the line item here, demolition of hazardous structures, DPW in-house demolition. Can you Correct. explain that a little bit more? I, I don't understand. The DPW, when they demolish a property, they go through OECD? Correct. If you recall correctly, if you recall, we um, leased the John Deere equipment for the demolition. Okay. Year, several years ago, DPW was doing all the demolition. So from time to time, they demolish a, a home. So that is, and we separated the funding just for in-house purposes. Now, when they demolish a home, does that come under the same restrictions as other OECD funding? It has to be a low to mod income area? It does. Go ahead. No. Councilman Laskin, the requirements to meeting the national objective to remove slum and blight does not have to be in a low to mod income, low mod area. It's specifically selected by removal of slum and blight citywide. That's okay. the federal requirement under the national. Does that include private properties well, I, owned by an individual? I believe if, if it's you condemned. Could, if in it's other words, if I had a property next to my house that I owned, but it was falling down, would you be able to come in and tear it down for me? There needs to be a base minimum requirements that are met through licensing inspections and permits. Okay. The clearance needs to go through the state. And clearance needs to go through the city planner that's detailed in an environmental compliance report that's provided to our office. Once those, that minimum criteria is met, it's selected through licensing inspections and permits to be applied to a demolition process in our office that we can bid it out. Is there liens placed against any property that's demolished? Yes, there Every is. Every property? Yes, there is. And you have a copy of the liens for each of the demolitions? Okay. I have a particular one in mind I will be checking on. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to read my notes here. Bear with me one second. I just want to make sure I have everything here. Again, there's no doubt, as, as, as Mr. Rogan stated, that uh, you know this has been my pet peeve for three years now, the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge. Nothing had been done or touched on it up until this past week when there was a piece of plywood thrown up there. This was mentioned in the newspaper, on the news media, and at this council stand for the last two and a half years. Now there's an urgency which I understand, but I was assured, as you were assured by the city engineer on certain issues, by PennDOT engineers, that the road structure is not hazardous, it's the sidewalks. Now apparently it looks like the boarding up area there has remedied the situation at this point. Was that approved by our city engineer also? Go ahead. Councilman Loscom, <clears throat> I don't believe that any one of us here can answer to the structural integrity of the bridge itself. None of us at this table today are qualified to give you that kind of a professional. I'm just asking if the city engineer approved that patch. That, that's all I'm asking. I, I can't. Who we, put that patch there? We cannot offer any guidance as to where that decision came from. When a project is delivered to OECD, it becomes a project funded under the federal government. We go through the procurement process. We make sure that all the base minimum requirements are met before the project is bid out. That may be for professional services and that may be for construction services. What you're asking us today is a question that needs to be asked of the Director of Public Works and the City Engineer, in all due respect, sir. Who proposed this project to OECD? The administration. Okay. Um, 
because I, I just want to make sure that the engineer approved that patch as it is and if that's the case uh, I have several concerns too on, on the urgency all of a sudden I think we have enough money for the engineering um, as far as the transfer but my other urgency is the problem with all our bridges in the city right now to get involved in a project on another bridge although it's sorely needed is going to cripple especially the West Scranton area uh, it's going to it's going to tie up lanes of traffic there's no doubt we have the uh, expressway bridge coming from uh, music street we have uh, the linden street bridge we have rockwell avenue they've been tied up for quite some time and, and if we remember the history of the crisp avenue bridge so to tie up another artery if it's structurally sound as pindot explained to me um, you know I don't know what waiting another year and, and, and possibly financing it in, in the next uh, OECD budget would do. That's my opinion. But, you know, three and a half, to over three years we've pursued this, all of a sudden there's an urgency to do it overnight. And, and I, has, I still have some questions and some issues I have to check out. Mr. And being part-time and, and, and not a full-time legislator here, uh, I don't have every day to research this. Mr. Lask, I'm sorry to interrupt, and we'd, I'm glad you brought that up because we discussed that, that exact issue the other day. Um, both Mr. Lask and myself live in West Scranton and travel from most parts of West Scranton to the downtown right now is terrible. Um, we have construction on the expressway, we have construction, we, will, we have Linden Street bridges out, and then you have Luzerne Street is the only other, only other option if the West Lackawanna Bridge is down for construction or down to, I, I imagine there will be some sort of lane restriction um, to do this, this type of work. Um, I would agree with Mr. Loscom that it's certainly it's a project that, that's worthy and it needs to be done, but I would hate to see construction on this bridge taking place at the same time when we have two other main arteries from West Granton to the downtown, and actually from West Granton to any other part of the city, not just the downtown that's out and, and that's a concern I have okay I, I believe I can offer some guidance on that information um, it has been determined by our city engineer that once the repairs begin on the sidewalks it will be done one side at a time and that we will have travel across the bridge it will not be shut down to do this type of construction work would it be restricted there will, there will be a restricted lane as a protected work zone for the workers. So what I'm envisioning is that the lane closest to the sidewalk that they're working on, that will be shut down. So there will actually be one other lane going west and two lanes going east. And the opposite side when they would work on the, on the southern side of the bridge. And then again, whether, you know, that would be better than obviously shutting it down, but still, that will still slow down traffic even more so coming from West Granton to um, two other parts of the downtown. And I, I think it's, it's a big decision that we all have to make. I, I don't see the urgency of transferring the funds right now. I, I, I don't know where my other colleagues feel on this because the money is there for the engineering and, you know, to get things moving. Um, I apologize, Mr. Loscom, uh, oh, for taking your time. Thank you. Fine. I, I believe that's all I have at this point. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have any questions? Yes, just uh, just a few. If we were to move along with this, uh, just to reiterate what Councilman McGough asked, the demolition of hazardous structures, no structures that are scheduled to be demolished in 2013 would be affected, correct? No, they would not. Okay. Wonderful. Well, the, as I said, after if we did transfer the two hundred thousand, <clears> you'd have three hundred and eight thousand dollars left. Right. So the eighteen that I am doing title searches on now would not be affected. Okay. And also, I, I heard you mention that we can't have more than one point two times our annual allocation at the end of the year or else we'll lose funding let me update you on our federal dollars i contacted hud on monday we still scranton still has not received even an, um how much we are getting in 2013. now we submitted our action plan in november uh, november 2012. we usually get a determination usually in march or april of every year 
and be because of the sequester we have not received anything not even the amount we are getting right and they could not even give me an answer when we would be receiving this so my concern is if we don't start spending this money November 1st comes and we get our 2013 allocation say October 1st that amount plus what we have now you have to put those two finance numbers together and then that would make up the 1.5 determination right that's all that's okay. all I have and uh, I have only one question I apologize for my tardiness um, when the revolving loans are coming back in can you then fund potentially now let's say uh, that uh, the accounts of the Falcons and the North Scranton Little League are used for this purpose can you then fund those accounts that you have depleted for this project when we get our pay our monthly payments in from the revolving loan fund we have to use our program income first which would be the revolving loan money mm -hmm. and if you recall the last time I did legislation to you to transfer I think it was to paving there was unspecified funding I believe you asked me a question you uh, council didn't understand what unspecified funds meant so say you needed fifty thousand dollars for I'll just say for paving and you're not going to be using entitlement money you're going to be using the program in the revolving loan money the fifty thousand of that first so that opens up the fifty thousand dollars of entitlement for unspecified program use that you could designate to a project and before you came in mrs um yeah mrs evans um i did indicate that if we do run low on the demolition we can do a substantial change on, on those unspecified funds to demolition mm -hmm. but we don't have enough money now to do a substantial change in this amount of money okay so in other words um, of the projects that you envision um, using in order to transfer those funds into the bridge project well prior be we we can expect then that most of them will lose their funding then. correct um, prior to you coming in and I'll give you this before I leave it sort of gives you an explanation of why we chose each project mm -hmm. there is no response as I speak right now North Scranton Little League and Westside Falcons they are not eligible for federal dollars because there's no surveys they are not located in a low mod income area so they had to do surveys North Scranton oh, I'll do the Falcons first I'll recap we did receive surveys from from them but they their membership list was 225 on their membership list mm -hmm. 110 surveys were received but 115 other people on this list did not submit surveys so that only gave us a 35 percent low mod count we needed 51 percent we reached out to the West Side Falcons we have not received any information from them I mean I must have written them seven eight letters with no response and, uh, and is the, the situation similar regarding the North Scranton Little League North Scranton Little League is even more difficult because North Scranton Little League's um, application stated that they wanted to use do playground equipment so you would not take the Little League membership you have to take the census track mm -hmm. who lives around the North Scranton Little League so I gave an example of everyone living around in that census track you'd have to go knocking on the doors and ask them to fill out their the survey and give you their income they're not going to do it um, keeping in mind that 
our CDBG funding, well, not just ours, but all municipalities nationwide, mm -hmm. have shrunk over the past several years. Correct. Congress, whomever is in charge, the Senate, the President, have decreased funding for these purposes. And you mentioned the sequestration and what effect that is having currently on the program. Uh, is it possible that in Scranton and any other municipality across the nation uh, that your current year funding that has not yet been received and in fact as you noted then the uh, total number has not even been indicated yet from Correct. the government uh, can that be decreased by the amount of money that the local OECD office has in its accounts. Would the government ever go so far as to say, you have X amount of dollars sitting, so we're decreasing the funding for which you've applied? That's why we have to be very careful with the 1.5 time, times the amount of money we have. You are correct. However, we do have a contract with HUD. And this is the amount that they stated we are getting. Mm -hmm. That is fixed. However, if we don't use the money, they can take it. If that answers your question. Yes, because my concern is that the dollars are drying up more Correct. quickly than um, you know the projects can be funded, and the projects are are certainly all uh, meritorious and the city is in need of this funding desperately right. and i guess my concern is just that uh you know with the conditions we see the national government in right now that uh you know until there's a change in that we're going to be looking at an ever shrinking income to fund all of these projects so the decisions have to be made i think very carefully I agree. I agree. I think we need to look at, especially in, in maybe a month and a half, our 2014 applications will be coming out. We, both the administration and city council has to look at the applications very carefully. What do we want to do with this, this funding that we're going to be receiving? They have to be shoveled ready. We have to get the money out the door and do it following federal regulations. Uh, well, that's all I have. Is there anyone else with a final thought or question? I thank you all very much for your participation you. tonight. This caucus is adjourned.
rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our service men and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community, particularly Daniel J. Sullivan, beloved husband, father of my neighbors Anne and her husband Jake, grandfather, brother, uncle, World War II Army veteran, and one of the original 90-day wonders serving in Italy during the European theater of operations. Hilda I. Williams, loving wife, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, and our friend. Frank Sizik Zayek, devoted husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother of my friends Tom Sizik and Marion Kwiatowski, uncle, Korean War Army veteran, youngest foreman of the Scranton DPW, and retired Scranton firefighter. John Robert Pesavento, beloved husband, father of our friend John and wife Sandy, grandfather of Amanda and husband, city business administrator Ryan McGowan, and Korean War Navy veteran. Rasan Crowder, Lackawanna College student who was killed this past weekend, and their dear families and many friends they leave behind. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A. Notice of the upcoming meeting of the Scranton Redevelopment Authority to be held on Wednesday, June 5th, 2013 at 1130 a.m. in Scranton City Council Chambers. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Tax Assessor's Report for hearings to be held on May 15, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I have one. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read from the letter. To whom it may concern. I am writing to request your support for Memorial on the Square. The community of North Scranton is gathering together this year to erect a monument in honor of Jerry Moran. Jerry grew up in North Scranton and graduated from Scranton Technical High School. After high school, Jerry studied photojournalism at Oklahoma University and joined the U.S. Navy. He traveled the world as a combat photographer for the Navy between 1979 and 1984. When American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon on Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, Jerry was working there as an engineering contractor for the Navy, doing video teleconferencing. Sadly, Jerry's body was never recovered nor returned to his family. In order to commemorate our local hero, a monument will be erected in Providence Square. This monument will forever commemorate Jerry and his ultimate sacrifice to the country he loved. In order to raise the money needed to purchase the monument, have it engraved and installed, there will be a fundraiser on May 18th, 2013 from 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. at the Polish Club in North Scranton. Tickets for the event will only be $10 and will include food and refreshments. Let's show everyone what North Scranton can do. The night is sure to be monumental, and I might add all of the city, not just North Scranton. I hope you will consider a donation to this fundraiser in any form. Donations can be made payable to the Jerry Moran Fund. You or your business will be recognized on signage at the event, 
as well as on social networking sites and any other advertisements for the event. If you have any questions, please feel free to call 570-575-6752. Thank you in advance for your support. Sincerely, Nicole Lance. Thank you. That's all. Um, two events, um, two great events this Saturday, May 11th, one in the morning and one in the evening. Um, the first one is a 5K run slash walk for kids hosted by Lackawanna Ambulance this Saturday, May 11th at McDade Park. The registration begins at 8.30 a.m. and the walk at 10. Prizes, refreshments, and all proceeds go to Abilities 21, a local support group for families of children with special needs. Second, the Dante Literary Society is having their spring pasta dinner. It will be on Saturday, May 11th from 4 to 7 p.m. The menu will include pasta and meatballs, salad, bread, cake, coffee, and tea. So you can get the exercise in the morning and then get your meal at night. The, the cost is $11 for adults, $7 for children, and the location is 1916-1918 Prospect Avenue located in South Scranton. Thank you. Is there anyone else? <laughs> Council Solicitor Hughes is unable to attend tonight's meeting. The Lackawanna County Astronomical Society will celebrate Astronomy Day this Saturday, May 11, 2013, at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Thomas G. Cupolari Observatory. The planets, star clusters, and galaxies will be visible through telescopes. The program is free, admission is free, and the public is invited to attend. The Scranton-Lackawanna County Taxpayers Association will conduct interviews of Republican mayoral candidate Marcel Lisi and Democrat William Courtright on Tuesday, May 14th at 6 o'clock p.m. in Scranton City Council Chambers. The interviews will be broadcast on Channel 19 by ECTV. Republican candidates for the office of Scranton Mayor will debate on Monday, May 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. in the University of Scranton's Brennan Hall. Democratic mayoral candidates will debate on Tuesday, May 14th at 7 p.m. in the Moskowitz Theater on the fourth floor of the University of Scranton's DeNaples Center. Both debates are sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Lackawanna County and the University of Scranton's Political Science Department. And finally, I'd like to wish all the wonderful women in our community a very, very happy Mother's Day. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Frank Galdieri. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Most of you know me. I'm a retired police officer with the city of Scranton. I have been contacting <laughs> council, DPW, the city, for many, many years. And I've come to the conclusion that I need to ask council one question. What is the scope and purpose of Scranton City Council? What is your meaning here? We are the legislative body of the city of Scranton, and we serve as a system of checks and balances on the executive branch of government. That's the answer I was looking for. Thank you. Checks and balances. When I walked in here this evening, Mr. Jim Lockwood from the Scranton Times saw me. He said, Mr. Galdieri, I can't believe you're here again. It's been a year that he was here when I came to council over a year ago, begging to get my road paved. However, it's not the first request. Many of you know that. Mm -hmm. I have been requesting this for over 18 years. The road has not been resurfaced in 26 years. I have documentation that I've sent to the city numerous times. My next question is, what do the dates March 8, 2012 and March 21, 2013 have in common with the City Council? I don't know. This is Regarding your minutes. 
March 8, 2012, Mr. Rogan. Next, I wanted to update a few items that were brought up last week. Last week, the conditions of Pike Street were brought up by a resident. I spoke to Mr. Galdieri on the phone. I actually missed a call from him yesterday. I have to get back to him, but the DPW hasn't gone there to patch the holes. Never mind, put it on a paving list or move forward with a permanent solution. It's very frustrating as a council person when people come to you, and I know Mr. Laskin as well, spoke to Mr. Galdieri, and you relay this to the department head, nothing gets done. And I thought, you know, for once, even the Scranton Times did an article on this, that it would light a fire under the DPW. The next day, the truck should be up there and at least patching the holes. To this day, still nothing. March 21st, 2013. Also one that myself and Mr. Loscom addressed numerous times, which is Pike Street. Potholes still haven't been filled. The road still hasn't been paved. We haven't heard anything whether it will be placed on a paving list for this year. Could we also request once again that the road is repaired in the meantime and hopefully placed on a paving list for 2013? Quote, this is one of the worst roads in the city. It is one of the worst roads in the city. It's deplorable. We're actually driving on dirt in many areas. Mr. Rogan, Mr. Loscom have both been up there. They've seen it. The Times has documented it. WNEP's been up there. What does it take to get this road resurfaced? That's my next question. City Council does not have the authority to direct the uh, DPW director or the mayor of Scranton. The mayor basically, well, I'm sure you're aware, the mayor has the power to hire and to fire alone. The mayor oversees all of his cabinet members. So it's either a matter of the mayor giving that order or the DPW director deciding independently that that particular street would be placed on the paving list. City Council does not compile the paving list, whether it is the streets that are paved through OECD funds or through other funds, meaning citywide, whether it's low to moderate income areas or uh, moderate to high income areas. The most city council can do, and I know because I remember you too, you emailed me many times, and it's long before uh, 2012. Yes, ma'am. And I made request after request after request to have that road paved, as well as a number of others, some of which haven't been done in 50 years. Uh, and this is citywide. We can only make the requests. We cannot give the orders because we have no authority to do so, nor will they respond to an order coming from City Council. We have made every request on your behalf, but uh, my recommendation to you would be to call the mayor's office and ask for a meeting with him and with Mr. Dewar, the head of the DPW. I've done that. And? I was there this morning again. Never got a phone call back. You were in the mayor's office this morning? I was in the DPW's office, mm -hmm. again. My level of frustration is just absurd at this point. Mr. Rogan and I have in, been in close contact many numerous times. And one of his last responses to me was, I've sent over a dozen letters to Mr. Doerr with no response. So my question, which I first asked is, what is the purpose of city council? If it's the checks and balances, shouldn't somebody intercede and say, we've got a problem here. This is a serious problem. You're not even making an attention to it. You're not responding to it. It's apathy and ignorance. I don't know and I don't care. It's not right. Something needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, it was very disturbing for me to hear last week that the AEDs that were 
donated to the city by Sanofi Pastor, have been sitting in Fire Chief Davis's office and not being used. Excuse me, uh, just a clarification. I'm sorry, they're not in Chief Davis's office. He doesn't have them. I was there. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but Councilman Rogan stated that last week, and so did Councilman Lasko. Uh, just going by what I heard. We're just re okay. we were reading from a letter last week, Les, but I, I'm still working on getting to the bottom of it. To be honest with you, I was going to address it later, but uh, I did speak to the chief. He assured me they're not in his office. But okay, but are they on the fire trucks? I believe there's two trucks that have them at this point: Rescue and uh, one of the truck companies. Okay, but they're not the ones that were donated, correct? No. Okay. Well, be interested to find out where they are if they're not in the chief's office because they should be on the fire trucks. I, we're I, talking about, we're I've talking been about doing some work lives. and I still have a full report to give, but it won't be tonight because there's still okay. some information I'm, I'm well, working on. We're talking about on. saving lives here. Whoever has them should be getting them ready to go, put batteries in or whatever, and get them on those trucks. We're I talking agree. about lives. But, but as Mr. McGough said, the, the chief doesn't have them in his office, but they're somewhere. Okay. City Hall. Yeah, I just go by what I heard last week. Uh, next thing, ATVs. I've talked about them here, saying how dangerous they are. If anybody read the paper this week, a young man from Tunkhannock High School was just killed this week on an ATV. There was also a story about two weeks ago about an ATV hitting a young child and killing that child. I've come here many times saying how dangerous they are. Where I live in Trip Park, they're all over the place. I was walking my dog down Dorothy Street about two weeks ago in the dark. Two ATVs came flying down Dorothy Street. It had to be going 50 miles an hour at least. No lights. It was pitch dark. Could have easily killed somebody. So maybe a letter could be sent to the chief and uh, see if they can get extra patrols on Dorothy Street maybe. I thought when the new school was built, I might solve that problem because that's where they used to go. But now they're going all the way at the end of Dorothy Street. I think there's railroad tracks there. And, that's where they're going, I think. But, but I, I was really upset that night when they came flying down Dorothy Street with no lights. It was pitch dark. No regard for anybody's safety, even their own. Mrs. Craig will send that to Chief Graziano, please, for his attention. And I, I just want to add to that. Uh, I know I personally have seen them on um, Parker Street which is particularly dangerous because it's down to one lane uh, over that bridge for over two years now. And they will come flying through regardless of the color of the light. Uh, here's another pet peeve of mine, pit bulls. If anybody watched the news yesterday, uh, there was a pit bull attack on Hazleton. This gentleman was walking his dog. I forget what kind it was. Pit bull attacked the dog. Thank God the dog lived but it took $2,000 worth of work to get that dog, okay, 100 stitches. Thank God they found the owner. The owner's responsible to pay that $2,000. But something's got to be done. And you know what? I think pit bull owners should have to register that pit bull just like a sex offender has to register so we know where they are. Because I know when I walk my dog, I'm always looking around. As you know, my dog was attacked quite a few years ago by two pit bulls. And thank God she survived. I think these people should have to support, or report, I mean, and uh, so, so, we know, so we know where they are. I think it's a dangerous situation. These dogs are very, very violent dogs. Uh, next thing. Last week, two candidates came up to this podium and spoke and criticized the way the tax office is being run, and one was a mayoral candidate. And with all due respect, Mrs. Evans, I don't think you should have let that continue. Because we all know the tax office is run by another mayoral candidate. And to me, that's just up here campaigning. And I don't think it should be done. And I think the only person qualified to run the city is the tax collector. And these people are just getting up here looking for their moment of fame. And I don't think it should be allowed. They can come up here and speak, but they shouldn't be able to speak about another candidate. Uh, lastly, the food trucks. Uh, I guess that's on the agenda tonight. And, uh, For its second reading. I hope, uh, I hope council uh, does it okay the way it's, it's written right now. I hope they uh, leave it at $100, uh, I mean 100 feet for the uh, food trucks. Because like, like I said last week, we can't put them out of business. Like I said, if we chase them out of the city, their businesses 
what are we telling other businesses that are coming into the city? So I will hope council keeps it at 100 feet. And uh, that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bill Jackowitz. <clears throat> Good evening, Scranton City Council. Bill Jackowitz, South Scranton resident. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, it's nice to see all these students here. I hope uh, they will participate in the election in May, and I hope they're just not here for credit. And uh, also, uh, the students are here. There will be a Veterans Day, uh, Armed Forces Day parade on May the 18th at 11 o'clock in Scranton. So I hope uh, you get all your students to come down and honor all your military personnel who, who will be marching in that parade on May the 18th because it would be nice to get some young people out there for the Armed Forces Day Parade. Maybe we can match the St. Patrick's Day crowd. I doubt it, though. Okay, lowest most responsible bidder, not necessarily the lowest bidder. Could this statement by Attorney Paul Kelly be in interpreted that the choice has already been made? Possibly pay to play back in Scranton? How has the taxpayers benefited with the new policies in effect for the parking garages and meters. Personally, I don't see any benefit yet. Uh, it's, been come, it's coming up on a year, and now we're yet three people applying for it. And, well, anyway, I just hope there's no shenanigans in play here. Uh, I also had the same question about city council. I mean, we pay $130,000 a year approximately for city council. Five city council members, three secretaries, and an attorney. But yet it seems like every time we're told that you can't do anything. And all we do is send letters. We're making the post office rich if we're using stamps. No. I mean, <laughs> seriously. I mean, somebody needs to do something. This city has been distressed for 21 years. Somebody has to do something. And it has to be done now. Every day wasted is another day deeper in the hole we go. So sooner or later, somebody, Somebody has to answer to these, to these problems that this city has, whether it be the mayor or whether it be the, the, the department heads or whether it be city council. I'm sorry to say that you guys are the only ones that are open because you hold a meeting every week. We, you know, the mayor, I don't even know if the mayor still lives in the city. You know, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't know if Mark Dewar lives in the city. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't because nobody ever sees him around. You try to you call his office, he doesn't res respond to your calls. You send him letters, he doesn't respond to his letters. So I don't know if they still live in the city or not. I mean, they may be living in who knows where, you know. But somebody has to do something. This has been going on for like 270 months now. The city has been distressed for like 270 months, going on 21 years, and nobody ever has any answers. I I'm tired of hearing that, and a lot of other people in this city are tired of hearing that, tired of hearing that. We need to start getting answers, and somebody, whether it be the mayor, whether it be city council, or whether it be the, the uh, city controller, you guys are the seven elected people in this city. We elected you to help us and make our lives better. All seven of you. Now get together and start working together. And I don't mean next year when we get a new mayor and a new city council. I mean right now. May the 9th, 2013. Let's start working together and working on these problems that we have. It's ridiculous now. That's why people don't even want to come to the city anymore. Seriously. I heard the candidates for mayor speak about negotiation with the city unions to try and reduce the payroll. We need to start that right now. May the 9th, 2013. We need to start those negotiations right now. We don't need to wait until we have a new mayor and a new city council and a new city council president. We need to start those negotiations and talks right now and get something in place because the city is dying and is dying quick. Uh, after speaking with numerous Scranton residents, we are weary of Scranton government as is. We need to get real in Scranton. Nobody has the stomach to do just that, other than perhaps those who advocate bankruptcy. The city needs to behave as if it already is bankrupt because the city is bankrupt. It needs to make the tough decisions and make cuts. I do not see this happening, especially when the mayor-elect receives a $25,000 pay raise and appointed attorneys receive bonuses for doing their job. 
That is helping the city out of the financial mess which was, which was created by the seven Scranton elected officials and Pennsylvania Economy League. The taxpayers did not create this mess, but they will pay for it. I see some fairly weak attempts at cutting costs, but nothing approaching the type of cuts in enforcement of current laws that need to be put into place. Deb Newhouse has proposed a noise ordinance. Ronnie Elman has proposed citing people for parking violations. Nothing has ever been done. Are we serious about raising revenue or are we not? Let's get serious, May 9th, 2013. Greg Evans. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Greg Good Evans. Evening. Good evening. A Scranton resident, homeowner, small business owner here in Scranton. Uh, I'm here today to address you regarding the upcoming food truck le legislation. Um, I'm not here to speak to you as a brick and mortar restaurant owner, which I am, um, nor am I representing anybody by, ha by, by being here. But it's great to see that you know some of our competitors are here with the fork. Um, instead, I'm here to speak speak um, purely as an advocate of what's best for Scranton. Uh, by that, I mean we must be mindful and think long term that the legislation today has a positive and positive impact in years to come. Let me state that I'm also a patron of the food trucks, believe it or not, and I've enjoyed their menus and I appreciate their entrepreneurial efforts. One of my business is a restaurant. And it's, it relocated from its original um, location in order to reduce expenses, rent, utilities, taxes, et cetera. Um, that was a smart business decision that put us from losing money every month to profiting monthly. Smart decision, right? Of course. Um, so what would happen if small restaurants see the advantages, especially of no property tax, and they decide they're going to downsize to a food truck and leave their brick and mortar location? Uh, this concern is this concern lies on more vacant storefronts. And I'm sure we can all can agree vacancies aren't inviting for other businesses or residents. The, um, the downtown revitalization would be taking two steps back. Again, this is not me attacking the industry or taking a side right now. This is me being purely um, in the middle, looking out what's best for the taxpayer. I'm solely speaking from the perspective of economic impact. There's good news, however. There are simple solutions to encourage brick and mortar restaurants to stay put in their retail location and for food trucks to operate on a level playing field. I have three solutions I would like to suggest to you. One, allow food trucks to operate, but limit the parking spaces they may occupy. This will prevent saturation of, food trucks, of the food truck industry and allow for an acceptable amount of competition between the mobile vendors and the retail brick and mortars. This will also encourage brick and mortars to stay where they are. Two, increase the annual food truck fee. Uh, yes, they have costs of doing business too. I understand that completely. But this shows they are truly invested in Scranton, just like the brick and mortars. Perhaps you might want to consider it something of a pilot. Three, once the limited spaces are decided upon, bid them out. This would be a cre creative revenue source that would gain top dollar for quote unquote uh, space fee for prime locations. With these three solutions, you are controlling the economic impact of the exciting new food truck industry. And with this control, you are ensuring a positive economic impact. You may be also satisfying both, uh, both sides by creating a level playing field. With these considerations and the open dialogue between the brick and mortars and food trucks, tr food truck vendors, I'm confident they will find a way to coexist and collaborate to make downtown Scranton even more inviting. These dialogues are a great example of democracy. Moreover, they are a brilliant example of cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doug Miller. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, as I was heard, I was criticized earlier in the evening for politicking from the podium again. Uh, I guess that's what happens when you've been coming here for 12 years. Uh, you know, I don't come here as a candidate. I come here as a concerned citizen of this city. And, you know, maybe if some of the other candidates who are so-called concerned all come out of the woodwork every four years and who've never attended a public meeting, their, meeting in their life, you know, let them come down here. Uh, this, this podium and this chamber is open to everyone. So, 
you know, I've, I've dealt with that issue in the past. I'm not here to politic. I'm here to discuss issues. That's the difference. Moving on to business, uh, I'd like to touch on the food trucks once again and reiterate my statement uh, in support of the food trucks. I don't see why uh, we need to make an issue out of this. These are individuals, as I stated last week, who are only trying to make a living just like anyone else in this community. And rather than causing harm and trying to force them out of the city, as the administration is trying to do here, we should be supporting them. We should be working cooperatively with them to ensure that they can be successful here and work with the brick and mortar establishments in the city. Uh, this is about, you know, getting everyone involved and trying to move the city forward. And what we seem to want to do here is push people out of the city that are only trying to, uh, you know, benefit not only themselves but the community. And I'm hopeful that, uh, as I said last week, we can come to a resolution on this and uh, make sure it's in the best interest of all parties. You know, last week some statements were made uh, in regards to, you know, cooperation and, and the mayor and the council working together. and. Uh, you know, it kind of brought me back to a lot of the, uh, the arguments I had made uh, in, in the last, last year and a half, uh, particularly going back to the summer when we dealt with the recovery plan. And, you know, I, as I've said before, I, I sound like a broken record. I, I, I truly do wish it was as easy as, you know, a lot of the speakers think it is, uh, as well as a lot of the candidates out there running for office. You know, we, we hear about, you know, how we need cooperation and we need to do this and we need to do that. You know, I don't think a lot of these individuals would last five minutes in your shoes if they really knew what you went through last summer um, and how difficult the decisions were you had to make. You know, it's, it all sounds nice to say we need to work together, we need to do this, we need to make cuts. As we talked about last summer, there's only so, many, there's only so much you can cut. You know, we hear we need to slash salaries, we need to you know, cut public safety. There comes a point in time where it's not realistic anymore. There's only so much fat you can cut. Uh, you know, the only way you move forward is by coming together and put your minds together and you come up with solutions and that's exactly what you did. That's why we had a recovery plan put in place. Yes, we know the realities at this point in time. We haven't realized a lot of those revenue sources. But as we talked about many times, we could have very easily given up on all of those revenue enhancements and said, no, you know what, we're going to take the easy way and we're just going to throw in the towel and we're going to file for bankruptcy like so many people wanted us to do. Well, that's not the solution. Let's, take, let's go down and, and, and see what's going on in Harrisburg. And if you watch the news recently, you see they've gotten themselves in even more trouble by misleading uh, investigators as to what their financial situation actually is. Is that where we want to have ourselves in? Is that the situation we want to put ourselves in at this time? I don't think it is. So for a lot of people out there who, in my opinion, I think really don't have all their facts together, I think you need to sit back and take a look at the whole picture that, yeah, this is a tough time. But well, we could sit and we could finger point and we can go back and forth until we turn blue. But the reality is we have difficult decisions to make. They're not easy. And it's been proven that when two sides of government come together, things can happen. So when we want to talk about cooperation, well, yeah, let's go back to the summertime because we had cooperation. You know, we had a council and a mayor who we never thought would come together, but it happened because this council put politics aside and realized one thing, the people, this community, and the future is what matters. And we know, who, we know the ones that contributed. We know the ones that sat and grandstanded week after week and contributed nothing. We know who those individuals are. We know who made the tough decisions. And I'm confident in this recovery plan, and I'm confident in the work that you put in, into it, that we will realize these revenue sources, that it's going to take time. Things don't happen overnight. But we don't give up. We need to stay the course. And I commend you for everything you've done. And uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd just add to that quickly. Um, this council truly has worked hand in hand with the administration for over a year and a half now. And everyone on this council, with the exception of one member, has worked with the mayor and his administrators regularly, almost weekly, from Mr. Loscom and his negotiations on, with the mayor on union contracts. Mr. Joyce, who's handled the finances admirably and been to all the meetings with Pell, with financial uh, firms, um, myself. Uh, I know that Councilman uh, McGough, for example, handled the uh, rental registration program and attends weekly Pell meetings. So I think it's really. Um, a disservice to say that 
you know, there's a, actually there's two issues at stake here. That cooperation is going to solve everything. Cooperation is wonderful and we've been cooperating fully now since December of 2011. But the problems are so great that it requires much, much more than that. And, you know, unfortunately, as well-intentioned as people are, they don't understand all the, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of what's gone on and the facts. Uh, so I would say, you know, I just wanted to correct that mistaken impression that's been circulating for far too long that A, there's never been any cooperation or there is a uh, toxic relationship. That is not true. And number two, um, I think, uh, you know, to say that cooperation is going to solve all of the problems, all of the financial problems that the city is facing right now is terribly naive because, yes, certainly it's needed but there's so, so much to be done to make up for what has occurred since 2002. And uh, it's going to, as I said last week, it's going to take years to undo the damage. It's not going to happen overnight, and it's not going to happen magically because everyone, um, you know, uh, holds hands. Um, right. Uh, it certainly comes, though, from cooperation. That's a great help. Discussion, a diversity of ideas, um, listening to one another, and um, being open to trying everything and anything that can keep this city alive, keep public services being offered to the taxpayers, and keep their taxes manageable. And our next speaker is Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. I think the first thing I have here is that I didn't mention anybody's name last week. I merely agreed with what the Scranton Times said and um, gave my opinion on on, on who the solicitor should be and why. But, um, you know, what, what I'd like to say here tonight is that I think people come here and ask, like the first gentleman asked why we're not paving roads. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious why we're not painting, paving roads. And this isn't a shot at, at council, but uh, in my opinion, the city's been living on government welfare for decades. And, and we've, we've come to the point where everything is done with grants and uh, sometimes, uh, we make unwise choices and borrow money, and, and that's what's come. But at the end of every long day, there's only one person responsible for that, and that's the individual voters who go out and vote for the candidates of their choice. And in my opinion, that's their prerogative. They're, they're free to vote for whoever they care to vote for. And I think as damage continues to move in a forward cycle, it reaches a point where it's decades long. And then how do you turn around at at the end of the cycle and say that the last people sitting in the seats are the ones responsible for cycle after cycle of damage and and just no intervention just keep just keep passing it down the the uh, you know the line and um, you know I just find that the people in this city have to start making wise and conscious choices and I kind of agree with what Mrs. Evans said today. Um, I don't think the tooth fairy is coming tonight to solve all the problems the city has financially. And um, I'm, I'm somewhat of an opinion that um, we're going to see exactly where we stand in the next budget because um, I think it's going to be unbelievable and I don't know where all the money is going to come from. But maybe people will be hoping the tooth fairy is coming. So we'll see where that goes. But. Um, you know, the thing that has me is um, I didn't get a chance to see it. I've only heard about it. Um, and, but I did read some of it in the Scranton Times when they did interviews with the council candidates. And I just, 
and this isn't a shot at the Scranton Times, this is just m my opinion. I don't see how we can allow candidates to discuss a commuter tax because I don't see how we're going to go back into court and ask the court to grant us one. And that's not a criticism of the recovery plan, but Mr. Serafini's amendments were quite plain, that we had to prove that the recovery plan actually worked and raised the revenue it was designed to raise. And it hasn't happened, so my only curiosity is, how can we have candidates for office discussing a commuter tax that can't be enacted because the law doesn't allow it? I mean, maybe the, if the solicitor was here, he could give his opinion. But I just think that when we start listening to political campaigns, whosoever they are, they should be based in fact. And I think the last person that should be driving misinformation into the public is either the radio or the television or the newspaper, because all the voters come to a conclusion of where we should go. And most get no information from government itself. They go to outside sources. And the first gentleman, when he talked today about the roads, I did a right to know on the money that the city spent over decades. And the amount of money that the city's invested in itself is zero. I mean, I've gone back 50 years. Everything's been done with grant money. There's, no, almost, there's only one or two projects the city solely funded because I asked the question. So when you, when you look at that and you have people come up and they ask, what's the role of council? I think that every citizen in the city should read the, read the Home Rule Charter and know what the branches of government do or what they should do. And that's only good citizenship. And I think that more people should be at these council meetings and be more bathed in, in government to understand what we can expect from our government. It's, it's great to just stand there and expect unrealistic things, but then when you expect unrealistic things, you stop participating because nothing happens. So, you know, I just hope uh, you guys have a good day and thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Our next speaker is Dave Dobson. I have something to give to council here and I'll comment on it as we go. Um, okay, on 7A, uh, this is city business. Uh, we have a request for the assessor's office and the uh, commissioners to start reviewing tax exempts. And I, some of them do great things and some of them are just simply tax exempt and they greatly benefit uh, people throughout the county and the region. And nobody wants to compensate us for over 30% tax exempt property in this town so uh, I'd like to see some pilots I'd like to see safety fees and paving fees so that someday somebody that hasn't had their street paved or plowed in 26 years can get their street paved and plowed or whatever and I'd also like to once again stress that they should be politically neutral. Uh, they, as, uh, as a uh, tax-exempt uh, charitable organization, you have no right to uh, determine how other people should live uh, to your religious doctrine. Okay, the food vendors, I'm torn on that. Uh, I guess that is... Uh, what number uh, 6C, is that what's governing the food vendors tonight? It's in 6th Oh, okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> at this point, I think we need to really look at this because there's nice people on both sides, but uh, if you put the food vendors out of town, for instance, I seen uh, something about them not being allowed to operate at night after many of these institutions are closed. I purchased uh, one at Scranton Times had their, uh, their fireworks at Thanksgiving and the lighting of the tower. I had a nice, uh, nice uh, gyro and, and uh, 
uh, at the street festival and there was a band there and, and uh, the uh, restaurant on the corner was closed. So I couldn't buy anything there, right? So I, I think it should be just left be or tabled and let's see when the smoke clears and debate this a little further. Um, now, council candidates, uh, please start attending. Uh, I read about the debate. I'll try and catch it. Hopefully I can see it on ECTV. But uh, there's a lot of debt in the city and we need to know how it's going to be paid. And the test of a true fiscal conservative is somebody that pays the bills. My philosophy on life, and I'm not broke, is that expect the worst, you'll always be pleasantly surprised. Because <laughs> if everything can go wrong, it will. And even if everything goes wrong, you'll still have your bills paid and your head above water. And uh, expect the worst, and it's like I said, after it, it's all, uh, it's all downhill from there. It's, it's, it's a breeze. So, uh, I'd like them for, to start attending and they don't have to comment on political situations or, or campaign from the podium, but they certainly do need to get up to speed with what's going on in the city. And uh, I have a question with general dynamics and it's not the parking situation and it's a warning to them. Uh, it's my understanding that the work of general dynamics can be bid by Canada or Mexico under NAFTA. And I'm wondering, very seriously wondering, if the lack of work down there is because uh, somebody in the government is getting uh, cheaper merchandise from another country. We had that with the tanks. We have the A1 Abrams tank. They, Canada bought the German Leopard. We're supposed to be in a trade agreement. And they bought the German Leopard, manufactured in Germany. And now they, if, if there was a situation where it was needed, they'd have to go to Europe for parts. <laughs> that sounds silly to me. And uh, 5 A and B, does that involve Duffy Park? That is uh, selling certain tracts of land uh, to the uh, highway department, PennDOT? On Harrison Avenue? Yeah. Um, it kind of sounds like it. There's, I think, a, sort, a certain portion of land there that um, I believe PennDOT needs to purchase in order to um, facilitate bridge. its bridge project. I think they're going to try and keep the bridge open. Uh, well, whatever has to be, has to be. Hopefully, uh, they can renovate or replace or, or, you know, do something decent after the fact. Because uh, up on uh, Meadow Avenue, the last three blocks of Meadow, Meadow Avenue were beaten to hell uh, to put that bridge in over the gorge mm -hmm. uh, by the cemetery back there. And they didn't fix anything. The construction vehicles were over that daily. And it's all beaten up and, and torn up, and it's been left that way. Um, okay, uh, on what I gave you, what I'm asking is that that's an article on the Taliban taking over in Afghanistan. Now, the war drums are beating in Washington once again to get involved with Syria. And all we seem to do in these countries is set up uh, a theological dictatorship where people are given the death penalty for not even uh, just uh, silly church doctrines, uh, Islamic doctrines. And I would like for you to consider sending a letter to our representatives to stay the heck out of Syria, including the president, because we spent $3 trillion. We have wounded uh, troops that aren't being cared for and everything else. and. Here we go again. Now what's it going to be? We're going to have a $5 trillion deficit piled onto the deficit over Syria? I, I don't see that as right. And once I'll make a quick, uh, Eric Cantor is trying to uh, 
sell comp time as uh, compensation for overtime. What about the taxes? What about if you become unemployed? Can they hold that over to a quarter where you're laid off early and you have a low quarter? It's, I'll just take the money when I work for it and forget about it, Eric Cantor. Don't forget the bok, 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 everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank that you. That concludes our sign-in sheet. Is there anyone else who cares to address <coughs> council? <coughs> Good evening, council. My Good name evening. is Ken Martin. I'm a city uh, taxpayer, homeowner. All right. I'm also the president of the West High Falcon Youth Organization in West Side. I, I came here tonight mainly because I, I don't like anybody saying anything false about the West High Falcons or me myself. All right, it is what it is. That's the way I, what I believe in my life, <clears throat> which I'm not going through a good time with my wife right now. As anybody that knows me knows, my wife Kathy is going through a, a tough time. Uh, tonight, when, when you had Miss Abley here and the rest of them from um, OCD, um, I just want everybody to know, and I, I want the people to know out there that, first of all, do I believe the bridge should be, should be fixed in any way, anyhow? Yeah. Even if it was Falcon money or anybody else's money, yeah, I, I've lost kids down at my fields. All right, I've lost two players recently in the last couple of years on a fire. I certainly don't want any kid falling or anything like that or anybody getting hurt. <clears throat> but I, I believe the truth needs to be said at times and, and not to lie or fabricate. I am not going to say too much. I will say one thing. Back in, I believe, 07, when we did get the um, grant for the lights, which again, you all you know was for 100 grand, and the lights came in, and they were for, I believe, 79. The truck came in from Mesco Lighting, and dropped them. Actually, drove on the field, and we were responsible for taking them off. That was it. And the Falcons took care of the rest. The condo, the electrical, the building, the Falcons took care of the rest. There was some money left over, and through some people, I did try, not that I allowed money just to lay around like it was said tonight, I did try to purchase another um, pillar, another light in the far corner. You can imagine that with so many kids down the field that my one corner gets a little dark. And at the first bid that came in from Mesco, it was, I believe, for 12 something. And I did contact, at that time it was not Linda, it was Leo, I believe the last name was Delangelo, or mm -hmm. very close to it. Um, he told me I had to go under 10 grand. And at that time, uh, unfortunately the Falcons were coming off a championship season. And uh, right now, I mean, I have three, two champions, and I'll be honest with you, I'm, right now I'm sitting with a large bill, jacket-wise. So I didn't have the extra money. But what I did was I did call Mesco. And Mesco was very pleased with us. Mesco dropped the bill down to under 10 grand. Yeah, he took money off the light bulb. And I, I again, did talk to Leo about it again. And it was just a quick no. So that's what happened as far as that 21. And that stayed there forever. All right. As far as um, I know, times are tough uh, all over. Um, as far as the paving, um, I believe it was originally, uh, and that's been done a couple of times. I know she would said tonight, you got to jump on things. Well, this isn't my only job. This is something I do because I love it. You know, I go to work. I just got home. You know, usually during the season, I'm just getting home, going to practice. I eat at 8.30. <sighs> yeah, I love it. That's all I can say. Um, 
<clears throat> I, I forgot where I left off, to tell you truthfully. I just wish people would tell the truth, you know. Uh, as far as, uh, again, I, I think I'm starting to remember. Again, mind me. Uh, remind, uh, I'm sorry for the way I'm dressed, but I came right from work. And, uh, okay, back to the, uh, when they dropped it down to the 10, um, again, I was told no, and it stayed there forever. And as far as the paving, that's where I was. As far as the paving, all right, the, the, uh, it was done a couple of times. It was done by <clears throat> former player of mine, Russell. All right, uh, all the boys played for me. So uh, honestly, the city was getting a great deal by him doing it. Uh, anybody that's been by our field, all right, you notice the back alley, Dewey Avenue, right by the steps, it looks pretty bad right now, right? He was going to cut that out and pave it. He was also going to repave as you go up the back side, the back hill. Finish, uh, please. Do you want me to finish? Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as the roofing, all right, and by the way, I believe the first time he ever gave me a estimate on it was like, 18 I want and then I contacted him again when I thought it was going on so to say that it, things are dropped I, I, I disagree with her there all right as far as the surveys you got to understand this is not just I don't just do I have a normal job I have a normal family all right taking surveys not everybody likes to give one not everybody wants to know and let the city know what they're making all right, do I try my best? Absolutely. I will say this, I did go down to her office twice, not once, twice to hand in uh, surveys. All right, how many? I don't know, I wish I counted them. Uh, maybe if we ever have business with the city again, I guess uh, I'll hire my own solicitor or attorney. As far as the roof, the roof was uh, appraised at four grand that was a material only. I had a private contractor that was one of my coaches on my C team that was willing to do it, him and his brother. And certainly down at our field, all the coaches would have pitched in as far as carrying the bundles up. And all he would have had to do was lay them. But that's how it was. All right, and I don't want to take any, any, any more time up because I, I watch these meetings a lot, but uh, I, I don't come much. Unfortunately, I, I work a lot and I work out of town. Jackie, you did ask for something from Miss Avely. I don't have them all here because I did run, but I did find a couple ones just loose. I guarantee you, I know where you live, I believe. I will find more for you. And this is something you asked for today. Again, I think all you do a great job. It's not easy. I, I mean, I'm just a, a, a little guy that has 200 kids. By the, by the way, it's not 200 families. It's 200 kids. About 240. It, it fluctuates sometimes. Sometimes the cheerleaders better than the, are bigger than the boys. You know. Um, that's all I really got to say. Again, I just uh, the only reason why I came down here is just to tell the truth. Okay. Good night, Council. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Right. Just make a comment. <laughs> I know Kenny very well. He's married to my sister, of course. But uh, and and. Uh, and she's having her problems, like Kenny said. But uh, I got to commend Ken. I'm telling you, for years and years, he has coached the football teams back there, coached many of the great players we have today in college and beyond, out of his own time and his own heart. And he drives back and forth every day to Berwick. I don't know how he has the stamina or the energy, to be honest with you. But as you can see, I mean, he's passionate. He's passionate about what he does. You can, you, you can hear it. And I know he'd like to say a lot more. And, and, and that's what upsets me, and, and I think I'll save it for, for motions because I, you know, I've been quiet for quite a while now, and I think I'm ready to blow up. So, uh, you know, sometimes fair is fair, sometimes it's not. <clears throat> but the way some things transpire, it makes you wonder. And I think, hopefully, 
come election, there's enough people in this city that have their eyes open to what's been going on here. And again, I'm going to save that for, for motions, but just to touch on what, what Kenny said, there was $20,000, $21,000, I think, left over from a light. And we were told by Mr. D'Angelo at that time that anything over $10,000 had to be bid. Kenny went to the company that they got the previous lighting from, and they dropped the price under, under $10,000 at a cut rate price to do it. Then we were told, no, we can't do it. And at that point, when we applied for the paving and the roof, we were told we can't transfer that money over. Ironically, that's what they did. So I don't know what to believe over there, to be honest with you. Now, as, as Mr. Martin stated, they bought the lighting for the field. It was dropped off. The Falcons took care of everything from that point off, from, from the time they dropped them off from the truck. However, the hassle just to get the material for this roof, $4,000 was gonna get the material for the roof, and he had a roofer that's on the league that was going to put it on there. We were told you had to have engineering plans and this and that. That's the same with the parking. I mean, sometimes this money, good money, is thrown after bad. That's what's, pro what's wrong with some of these government programs. And she said, it's got to be shovel ready. You got to be able to get right into it. That's okay for the people that are on this OECD list year after year getting these grants because they already have the lawyers, they already have the financing, they already have the know-how. But when you're an average Joe and you're trying to get something for the people you work for and help and represent, to say it has to be shovel ready, that's why, and, and you don't have all the paperwork. I want to see a, a, a raise of hands here. How many of you would like to fill out a, a census survey Nobody. It's tough. It's impossible. Yet, I'm going to say it. <laughs> I apologize. I'm going, to, I'm going to say it. You know, we have people coming to this podium with all our ideas. They think we could snap our fingers here. Believe me, if we could, there'd be a lot more done. Cooperation, that's the big word, and Mrs. Evans alluded to it before. We cooperate as much as we can with everybody. It's tough when the cooperation doesn't come back. When we, re when we ask information from department heads and we're ignored or given lip service, which is the most part, not only us, neighborhood groups and everything, this has been the culture here for several years. That's why we're deeper and deeper. We're not at the, the, the abyss of the, the, the fiscal cliff right now because this council majority is here. That cliff has been building up for years. It's only been brought to your attention because this council majority is here. We had to stop it. If it went unabated, where are we going to be in two, three years? Yep, bankruptcy would be the only option. And we're not looking at that option. I know in my heart and everyone up here, our best interests have been for you, the taxpayers, and try to come with a balance all along. But as I said, today it came to a head because because of a situation like this, a situation like that. I spoke to people and, and, and a questioning like that. There are two sides in this city, the haves and the have-nots. If you're on the have side, connected, this is the, the nature of the politics here that we have to stop. I've stuck it out here because I want to see it stop. I think we have a good chance. But when it comes from the top, it's tough. Sure, there's five of us here. But that one still has more power than us five. Otherwise, things would be a lot different. But when I hear from contractors and developers the problems that they have with inspectors, with inspection companies, with permits, with zoning, all of this stuff. And I go out and I look at the quality of work some of these contractors are doing. I'm amazed. Because I turn around and I see certain favored few that are doing the minimum to get by and they have no hassle. In most cases, no permits. When I see people that have it are getting things taken care of them from the Department of Public Works, 
You try it as an average Joe to see if they'll come and take care of you. My frustration has been building up, and, and I'm letting it out. I apologize, but this is what's been going on. And election day is coming up, and you have to elect the people that you believe in, that you think can help and work with us. Not those that have been connected, not those that continually have connections, and don't believe in lip service. Look at their history, look in their eyes, believe what they have to say. Because that's, that's what you're gonna have. We're gonna have a new majority come January. I'm sad to see two of my colleagues leaving this board. And, and, and I would only hope the best for their future because they've been great to work with. And again, we all don't agree on everything here, but we work together and we get things resolved. But it's easy to sit back as a candidate or whatever and say, we need cooperation. That's the big problem. That's what we didn't have. Sometimes too much cooperation is the problem. Look back a few years ago when everything was being passed right through. We're checks and balances. We don't have to cooperate all the time. We have to work for you. And that's what we do. And uh, <laughs> it's been a long time since I had my blood pressure up like that. <laughs> There's a lot more I could say. But, uh, you know, be smart, be wise, be careful. Love your city like I do. And, uh, you know, I've taken personal hits, financial hits, because of this political system that, that abounds, uh, abounds in this area. This is something that has to stop. It's all over this area. I've had people lose their jobs because of where I am, but I'm not gonna compromise my beliefs to kowtow to someone of a, of a higher importance. I could have quit a long time ago and, and made a lot more money than I am sitting here right now. But I believe that we can make a difference, and I've believed it and I've stuck it out. And God bless my wife for sticking it out with me through this. But. I'll get off the soapbox now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. No, I think it needed to be said. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? I'm sorry, Andy, for tying you up there. Andy Spraya, Sons Grant and Fells Grant Townians. I hear a lot about shovel ready projects. Did anybody think the potholes fits that category? I'm sure they're sh shovel ready. But they ain't being filled, are they? And as far as the bridges, I guess we can teach all the kids to sing instead of London bridges, Scranton bridges are falling down. It'll fit right in. And we'll get by. Actually, we might even get action out of Washington. But uh, I was reading in the paper about uh, the bids for the meters. Is that 60,000 figure right that, that was there, that they were offering a 60,000 for the meters? Is that right? To, to operate the meter program. Yes, no operate the meters. Yes. They're giving us 60,000 to operate the meters. <laughs> and you said we were collecting, what was we collecting on the meters? Something like a half a million was pouring from the meter collections into the city coffers? that we couldn't transfer the meters over to the parking authority because we needed the money? I just don't make sense half the time. Now the, you the, their said, contract is for 60,000 to operate, to, to maintain them. I understand that. But who was getting the money from the collection? The city. city. The city was gonna get, why would anybody give 60,000 to operate the meters or were we paying them 60000 That's what I tried right. to say. We're paying them 60000 That's far different from the 125 that the original, if, if we didn't put it out for bid, where it would be. Oh, that's what it is. You want to pay them 60000 to operate the meters. Who pays for the meter maids? I didn't read the contract because it was a closed deal that day. Who pays for the meter maids to go out there and 
walk around and check for the citations. The city pays um, an agreed upon monthly payment to a parking media, meter manager. Out of those funds, I'm assuming, the uh, employees are paid. They are employees of the parking meter management company. They are not employees of the city of Scranton. Oh, I assume that because for 60000 I don't think they'd be hiring union people. That's obvious. So apparently the meter maids are going to lose their jobs or be transferred. Do we really have to do it? That's the question. Do we really have to? Surely there must be some person in the administration that can actually operate meters, parking meters. I remember we did it. I, this wasn't something that was there before life in Scranton. We used to do it. I remember the people going out collecting at the meters, checking the meters. But all of a sudden now you feel like we don't have the people that are really with the brain power to do it. And I don't quite understand that. Why can't we operate our meters ourselves? What is the main reason you're afraid that we don't have competent people that are able to do that? Because that's what it amounts to. You're saying that nobody in the administration has the brain power to oversee the meters. And we did it for years and years and years. It wasn't that until they got trouble with the parking authority that they went through all this other ring and roll. Remember, it was the parking authority that caused it because they needed that money to meet their payrolls or to meet their this or to meet their that. But surely you should think that we can operate the meters ourselves. It shouldn't be that complex. And the police and the citation issues can go out there and do what they always did. I got a ticket from the police up at the hospital. They did their job. I was parked a little too far out. So they gave me a ticket. It went down, I paid the ticket. But why do you assume we could no longer do anything in the city very good anymore? Everything has to be let out to something else. We want to sell the sewer authority, park, uh, the Department of Public Works, this, that, and whatever. What has happened to the administration in the city that we can't hire people competent enough inside the city to do the job that must be done. And as far as your cooperation with the mayor, when something is good, you do it. When something is bad, you say no. That's what you were elected to do. Mm -hmm. You are the balance of checks. Mm -hmm. You always were. I said with you many nights in the room out there, we're talking to Billy over the telephone, Washington, out of Harrisburg, I think. And you were coming up with a plan for fiscal. Of course, it didn't go through but at least you tried and you were there. I've been with you. You tried many, many things. It just so happens it fell on deaf ears. Everything fell on deaf ears. And it came to, it came to fruit now. When that man first stepped up there and you had the majority, the first thing I said to you was double the salary. He's gonna need it. Because I knew what was happening and I knew what was coming. And as far as the fruition is here, I understand we're going to get that tax increase. And anybody that runs for council and says we're against tax increases is the most stupidest thing I ever heard. We're all against tax increases. But that isn't what our problem is. Our problem is money. And the only way we can get money is either all the banks or tax the citizens of Scranton. That's the only way we're going to get out of this. We all know this. Anybody with common sense knows this. So we don't, there's no plan for grandiose designs. What we have to do is buckle down, like I said a long time ago, watch your pennies and the dollars will fall. I mean, we're, where we are now is almost impossible to get off. You're right. I'll be dead probably before we get out of this with any luck. If not, I'm going to be really taxed a lot. But that's what's going to happen. I'm sorry to see it happen. You're right. A lot of things have been let go. And as far as potholes, believe me, there's no, nothing that's more shovel-ready than our potholes. I mean, to go out with it, of course, they're, I always said 
the way they used to do it was the best way. Maybe they can't do it no more. They used to come around with a gas hopper, heat, the, heat it up, take a blow touch, heat the patch, drop the hot mix into it, and then run over it with a little steamroller. Now what happened to all that things, I don't know. But like anything else, I'm getting old. I guess they wear out like me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, a homeowner and taxpayer in the city. Good evening. Good evening. Um, uh, first, I, on agenda items, I would encourage you to pass 6 A and B tonight and then accelerate it to seventh order and, and for final passage this evening so that very worthy program can get started. Um, that's with the, on the library, on the Albright Library. And then 7A, I don't really understand what good a resolution is going to do. Uh, I, I believe the count now is the county refusing to do a, 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 an audit of the, the nonprofits is two refusals already. I don't know why we just don't pony up and do it. And in that vein, I have brought tonight, and I'll provide it to the clerk's office, uh, the copy of the uh, letter that the tax-exempt review letter was sent to all the tax-exempts out in Allegheny. And uh, you can go online and you can read it. And if you want to spend nine bucks, you can even print it. But if we put the onus back on the nonprofits rather than us trying to do it and then had somebody hired somebody perhaps to go over those and do a spot check with the 990s to make sure that everything was accurate or make the 990s an attachment uh, i think that would at least get it moving instead of playing ping pong with the county i don't think that's going to happen uh, back to some old items, uh, Mr. Joyce, again, the, you provided figures last week comparing real estate tax revenue uh, through April for 2012 and 2013. Yes. Did 2013 include the 22% tax hike again? Did 22, uh, well, yes, uh, revenues in, increased by 27%, but of course, we did have a 22% tax increase, so. And that's not usable for operating, general operating. That's for the unfunded debt repayment, correct? So it's, it's not really going to do operations a whole bunch more. So we don't have a lot of money, extra money around to do more than we thought, correct? Correct. Part, okay. uh, of, of course, part of that is for the yeah. um, unfunded debt. Yeah. Well, so, the, well, both both years, 2011 and 2012. One right. was 10 and one was 12. So, yeah, that's 22 right. the way I had. Yeah. So, now that's too bad. I hope we find a way to split that out so it more accurately reflects what's usable for operating expenses and what's going for prior debt repayment. Uh, then down, uh, Mr. McGough, back to you on the rental registrations. Um, or do I have to do a right to know to get the number of properties that are registered and of those, how many have been inspected by our city inspectors? And I then, do not have that number. Can you get it? You reasonably um, think? I can try. I would appreciate it. If you don't get it by next week and I'm here next week, I'll, I'll do a right to know. The other thing, do you know if they have provided the list of those who have registered to the single tax office so that they can also check to see if they're paying the mercantile tax on the, on the rentals? I do not know offhand if they've done that. Could you check on that as well? Okay. Because that's another... Um, okay, now... See where, oh, the, the, the parking meters, they were just talking. Is there a copy of the RFP available in the, in the clerk's office? Okay. I'll try to come in Monday to review that because the way I'm looking at it and, and looking at the, the quotes, 
this is only for the management portion so I guess there's going to be a second RFP for buying new meters etc is that is that the understanding that will go back to zero and when a car pulls out I mean the last one had new new heads on on the poles or is that still a plan my intention you know was for them to be rebid for the company the successful company to bid the uh, technology that's the way or, or to, for us to bid the technology for the you know vice versa okay because I, I I really didn't like the way however it's, that doesn't mean yeah, the it's way it's gonna happen that way yeah well the way yeah the way it sounds um, and I, I hope it's not true that's why I want to look at them is that it's it's just going to be fallback. We just wasted there's, a bunch of time, and it's going like to go to standard an anyway. And quotable sentence in that newspaper. And that, uh, uh, that's scary. that's very troubling. And I have a lot more, but please pass six A and B and tonight in six and seventh orders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Hello, my name is Simone Daniel. I'm a city taxpayer and homeowner. Pardon, and would you be able to repeat your name? Yes, yeah, Simone Daniel. Pardon? Simone Daniel. Simone. Just lift the okay. microphone a little bit. Is that better? Thank you. Okay. Um, I wanted to address the food trucks. I, um, I would hope that you would vote to keep the ruling at 100 feet and keep, I think at night, bit, at night when businesses are closed, that the distance should be dropped. Uh, the trucks have been a nice addition to the city. It's new business and provides the city with a good service, particularly at night. What I love about Scranton is that it's never felt like a small town. We've never thought ourselves as small. And I think we should be embracing this growth and entrepreneurship. The new regulations will drive out these businesses. There will be a lot of loss of investment for these people. And they base this investment upon the standing regulations. So um, I think in, to encourage continued growth and um, not to see any more people without income and without with the loss of jobs, if we keep things the way they are, I think that it's worked fairly well. There are glitches, but I think there's room for improvement. And, but we need to be keeping them where they belong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? I didn't see it, Chrissy. Now, Jaggy. If you put behind my house, Frank, the holes are a mess back there. They're, they're a mess. Okay. All right, thank you. We'll get on that. Thanks, Chrissy. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? 5A motions. Mr. McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Yes. Uh, first of all, to, uh, uh, on the food truck uh, restaurant situation, uh, I spoke to Ms. Leslie Collins, the um, director of Scranton Tomorrow, uh, today following the uh, meeting that was held with um, both the food truck vendors and the um, <coughs> restaurant owners. I'm told that there were approximately 20 individuals uh, that attended the meeting, that uh, it was kind of an issue-oriented meeting with an open and productive dialogue. Um, and as she said, it was in her email to me that it was um, amicable and that the issues were discussed openly. Uh, that many of the issues were discussed there were a few that were still open uh, that needed to be addressed and that they were going to reconvene early next week and that they would hopefully have um, sometime after that meeting have any proposed changes um, that they had that they would agree to that they had agreed to um, i know that that probably moves beyond the deadline that you had originally mm -hmm. set but um, I would hope that we can see the progress has been made and that we can wait until 
their proposals are presented to us before we advance the legislation uh, or before we vote on it in seventh order. Um, I, I'm assuming that we'll vote on it this evening and move Sixth. it. Sixth. Yeah, it, it, and move it to seventh order and, uh, and then wait to see what um, changes are proposed and what they have what agreements they have reached. I, I think that is the way in which we can resolve this to everybody's um, pleasure, or at least somewhat to their pleasure. Um, I, I think by moving forward with legislation that doesn't include their proposals would be foolhardy and um, really would defeat the purpose that we originally set out um, to accomplish. And with that, uh, I, I would like to thank uh, Leslie Collins from Scranton Tomorrow for conducting these meetings. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's a, an example of what cooperation and working together can do to resolve issues. And um, hopefully by the end of next week or into the following week, we have some resolution to the situation and uh, we can move forward with the proposals and, and with the legislation that would be uh, acceptable to all. Um, as far as the um, caucus that was held this evening and the funding for the West Lackawanna Bridge, um, I, I thought Ms. Abley um, presented the proposals from OECD um, very, um, I'll say properly. Um, she told us exactly why these things were chosen and um, to, to we, we have been we have questioned in the past OECD for not being diligent in doing things and now when Ms. Abley comes here and explains that she's trying to follow the requirements the HUD requirements for funding of these programs, and now we're questioning why she's doing that. Um, I, I, I think that, you know, if we, if we don't want the funding for that to come from these sources, then we should provide some other alternatives. Um, but for, from what she presented, these, some of these activities are not eligible. Others still have money remaining that would be sufficient for doing these projects into uh, to the end of 2013 and as far as I was concerned I was content with what she had to say and uh, proved what of what she had to say uh, third thing somebody mentioned you know some mention about street repairs and street paving um, DPW started doing street repairs and paving in April and have continued to do so on a daily basis Maybe it wasn't in front of your house or some area that you've driven, but they have been out on a daily basis doing repair when possible, weather permitting. They have been doing the repairs and actually have milled and started to pave a number of streets throughout the city. And lastly, on the rental registration, although I didn't have specific numbers, I did speak to uh, Mr. Seitzinger and also to um, Lori Reed, who is now in the um, rental registration, um, I'll say office, uh, I don't know if that's the right term, but uh, they are now <coughs> conducting a second mailing to landlords who have not responded uh, and telling them or explaining to them the late fees and other things that would be incumbent upon them should they not meet the, now that they have not met the deadlines. Uh, they're increasing the database daily. Housing inspectors are out every day um, looking at properties and adding to the database. And uh, she explained to me that a lot of the work that they've been doing has been sort of office work, working toward getting the database set and doing the mailings and so on, and that they have now started to or increased the time that they're spending doing the inspections, so that the number of inspections should be um, increasing uh, through the summer months 
and um, the last thing I think that sh should be noted that um, revenue from rental registration has already exceeded the budgeted amount and uh, if it continues and especially if they um, get to some of the delinquent um, landlords that um, it probably should exceed um, the budgeted amount by quite a bit and that's all I have thank you thank you and councilman Rogan any motions or comments yes um quite a few issues tonight actually um, I guess I'll start on the West um, Lackawanna Bridge and the caucus that we had and you know I echo a lot of what, what Mr. Loscom said and you know I understand his frustration and uh, I would first like to thank Ms. Abley for coming in which is something that we don't get from many other department heads so at least that's a you know something positive to take from the evening my concern is obviously all of these projects are worthy um, myself and others on council have made certain things priorities and the, the funding um, of these allocations one of them being um, demolition of hazardous structures and I think we need to do a, there are so many properties in this city that need to be torn down there are so many of them um, and I worry that taking the funding away now even though it may not be used this year will leave us in short when it comes to remove those structures in the future now Ms. Abley mentioned that you know and she's right that there can't be over a certain amount of money in, in the, the whole portfolio and we addressed that issue last year when it did occur I believe it was by unanimous vote to transfer funding from an area that I believe we everyone on the board supports which was the neighborhood police patrol so that we couldn't legally use at the time into neighborhood paving I don't think there's one elected official in this city that believes that would let funding go and return the funding back to HUD if it got to the point where we had to use the funds we would get it into a program where we could use it this program or, or this project the West Lackawanna Bridge I, I disagree with the assessment that it's shovel ready shovel ready to me means we could if we funded it today the work would begin within the next month we st there's still months of reports that have to be done before anything constructive is done now obviously that's part of the process but shovel ready to me means the engineering is done everything's ready we have a crew ready they just need the phone call to say the money's been appropriated we're not in that scenario um, I don't see what the urgency in approving this transfer is the, there's already a hundred and thirteen thousand dollars appropriated for the West Lackawanna Avenue bridge and Ms. Abley stated tonight that that would be more than enough to get the ball rolling on the studies and the the various other things that need to to uh, to happen before we get to the actual building uh, the actual repairs two other issues one that I'm glad Mr. Lascom brought up because I know we talked about it previously and I, and I forgot to mention it during the caucus is that travel in West Side is already very it's already very difficult to get from West Scranton to other parts of town because of the bridges that are out um, I believe PennDOT a few maybe a month ago informed us that the Linden Street Bridge would be repaired by the end of the year now if Linden was back up and running and Lackawanna had to go down to two lanes it wouldn't be as much of a burden because drivers would have an alternative route to get to and from um, the neighborhoods in West Scranton that being said at this time I, f I personally believe it should remain on the table I don't know how my colleagues feel about that um, I wouldn't be comfortable voting on it right now a and I think we should have a, a firm dollar amount of what the actual cost is the money was transferred the hundred and thirteen thousand dollars that's in there now was transferred from the Rockwell Avenue bridge because too much was put in so we may not even need this total amount. it may be less it may be more um, I would rather have the the exact amount of what it's going to cost before we we put the funding in maybe you know some of these projects can be saved maybe a little of the money in, in the demolition of hazardous structures could could stay or maybe you know a small amount for the vacant property review or for the Falcons now the the North Scranton Little League it, it's, it's a great program as well that one seems to be the the least feasible at this point in time um, 
you know, the, the surveying process is a little different there than with the Falcons, where it's just the, the survey of the players. And I, I'm glad Mr. Martin came as well to give their side of the story. Um, they do great work down there, and we, w at least myself, I would certainly rather give them four thousand dollars for materials and have volunteer labor than give out a grant to another organization for twenty thousand dollars that's doing you know the materials the labor and everything all, all bundled together but it's it's just frustrating that it, it played out this way you know that you know I know Mr. Laskin was for over a year has talked about this bridge and if the engineers are correct and the bridge is structurally sound and there's there's no there's no danger to motorists um you know I, I don't see the urgency in transferring the money right now when it's going to be month it's going to be a few months anyways and um next another road issue is pike street mr galdiri was here once again and this is, is a very frustrating issue now if Obviously, funds are limited, and not every street that needs to be paved can be paved. Anyone who tells you that would, would be foolish. But when a resident calls council members for emails for years, even before I was on the board, um, current council members, the mayor, current direct, director of DPW, former directors of DPW, and can't even get an answer, that speaks to the, the problem in City Hall the complete lack of cooperation in City Hall. And anyone who tells you there's cooperation in this building is delusional. I'm not delusional. Well, you would agree with me that council needs to cooperate better and have caucus before the meetings and other things need I've to had cooperate. I just said I, I was in this, I was in City Hall this week, went to basically every department, spoke to everyone. You believe right now the city is, everyone's cooperating as well as we can? Not as well as we can, perhaps, but it, it's not a total absence of cooperation either. And, and not only and with that's the, what you're indicating, and not only with the government intergovernment, but with residents as well. If a resident calls a department, now you don't expect to speak to the director of the department, or obviously you can't phone the mayor at any time of day. He keeps a very busy schedule as well, and I'm certainly not, uh, you know, uh, defending the mayor, but you would expect a call back at some point in time, or a letter, or something. Even if it's saying, you know, in this issue, Mr. Galdieri, we don't have the funding right now to fix your road. We'll try to fix the potholes. You know, please, you know, please try to wait, wait it out another year. Some kind of answer. Not just, you know, no response. I, I know Mrs. Evans mentioned was how many years ago did this begin when you were before I was on the board? And actually, um, before Mr. Galdieri turned to me, I know he had been um, emailing Mr. Court write about it for quite a while. So he kind of goes from council member to council member hoping that something's going to change based on to whom he's making the request. But I remember hearing, not 100% sure if it was Mr. Galdieri, but something tells me it is because this is a, a, an area of road where there's few homes, correct? Yeah that the answer, I believe, uh, he told me that Mr. Courtright gave him was, there aren't enough houses on this street. You, you know, you're not worth enough votes to be paved. Well, I, 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 I doubt that Mr. Courtright said that. Um. Well, no, Mr. Courtright was, he was not saying because Mr. Courtright's not in charge, yeah. just like we're not in charge. And that's the frustrating part. Mr. Courtright part. was only a councilman at the time. So that was the answer that he provided. And I'm assuming he was basing that on what he had been told or heard. And, and this is what's so frustrating about the way the city works right now. That, and, and I know Mr. Goldier is frustrated because of the condition of his road, but I think he would be a little more pleased if his call you know to the DPW was returned or even if they said you know we can, like I said before we can't pave it right now but we're, we're going to try to you know make it right in the future and it's just so frustrating it's not and it's not just this one issue it's so many issues 
some department heads have been very responsive to city council. You know, I, I don't agree with Ms. Abley on this issue, but I thank her for coming in. There are other department heads that we've asked to come in numerous times to discuss different issues, and they, they have it. And it's difficult for some of us, you know, that work during the day to make it down to department heads during the day. And a lot of times it's, these are important issues that need to be fixed. And people just want an answer. Some of the people that have contacted me with issues were so happy just to get a phone call back, even though their issue wasn't resolved, because they see a government at every level is so unresponsive to the residents. It's something I hope will change in the future. Um, and that's all I'll say on those issues. Um, two other items. Um, one, has council received legislation from the administration regarding the towing contracts? No. Okay, cause I, I did speak to a few um, tow truck operators that said there was a deal that was made um, between the tow truck operators and the administration. And he, you know, they asked me if it would be on the agenda tonight and I didn't know if it was, so it wasn't even sent down yet. No, it wasn't sent down, but I think there's going to be an issue with that because um, I think part of the agreement, and if you talk to them, you should be aware of the agreement, that it's um, giving them 10 years of a guarantee to do the work to the exclusion of everyone else at a rate of $20,000 per year for a total of 200000 you know, after 10 years, which is basically what they've been paying all along, so it's nothing different. But because $200,000 well exceeds the $10,000 limit for bidding, you know, if they want a contract, then I think this is going to have to go out to bid. And this is, you know, the, just so the, the residents out there know, this is an agreement that's trying to be worked out between um, the tow truck drivers and the administration to fill the line item in the budget for the city um, city tow yard that never materialized. So hopefully, it, I, I would like to see a draft of whatever was agreed upon. I know maybe the administration will send that down. Um, Mrs. Craig, can we request to receive a copy of any sort of draft um, agreement? Now, from what I was told, I was told that it was there, there was an agreement and it it should be up for a vote um, no there's been no legislation sent okay I'm thinking that our solicitor is going to want to take a look at it but you know what had occurred is that when you're when you're dealing with a contract like that then you're dealing and you want to make this into legislation then you have to abide by other legislation which then means this is going to be opened up to all towing companies to bid on yeah. and that's why this is you know in the past they've always operated year to year and this would basically they'd be paying us ahead of time because of what was budgeted and then the next you know so many years they wouldn't be paying it would be broken down into two payments this year instead of normally as they pay every year but um, it comes out to the same amount of money yeah mm -hmm. so actually the city um, you know, if the city had taken the route of the uh, towing, the towing yard behind the police station, it's very likely the city could have realized more money. Well, but the you know this was the mayor's decision. He wanted to handle this himself, and well, we, we'll we, see what happens from here. I certainly disagreed with some members on the the, the yard, and we don't have to rehash that issue again. Um, but I think the, the problem was that it was put into the budget. Now that, that money has to be realized somehow. Um, if the yard didn't materialize, they're looking for another way to bring in, um, to bring in that amount of money for, for the budget. Um, and finally, one issue, and this would be a request to Mr. Seitzinger, um, regarding the food trucks, if any legislation is passed from city council, um, who would be enforcing that legislation? Um, which is a question that was that was brought up. Um, and that was a question that was addressed uh, at the meeting today. They were I think it's in the legislation. Them. Health okay. inspectors he and city police. Which health inspectors, though, is the question? Well, this this is this has come up before, and I know from union that this is the that's question. Where, yeah, that's exactly there right. Is, as you can see, there's several different pieces of legislation where 
it says the health inspector, you're adding duties only because they're now uh, memorializing, for back, lack of a better word, the fact that they will have to inspect a, a food truck where before they didn't actually say that in the code. So those would be the additional duties to the health officer. Uh, as far as distances, that has nothing to do with uh, anything in license and inspections for a health officer. Um, would it be the police or license and inspections? I think they would have to decide that among themselves. Could we send that to the police department as well then um, to see if, if, if they would be enforcing it? And, and, and I guess it's a little premature because nothing has passed yet. Um, well, I think the question is who's enforcing it now? Yeah, if it no even one. is being in. It's never been enforced. You know, if we're going to pass some, some sort of legislation that's not going to be enforced, I, <laughs> you know, we may be wasting our time. Um, you know, I'd like to know who, who would be enforcing it, and I don't know if, that will, if, if there will be a union grievance over this or, or, or what's going to happen um, regarding the, the extra duties with, with the inspectors and with the police department. But it's definitely something, uh, you know, just something that was brought up to me that I'd like to get out there. Um, that's all I have for tonight, and um, thank you. And I'd like to wish um, my mother, my grandmother, and all the mothers out there a very happy Mother's Day this Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, and Councilman Loscombe. Thank you. Uh, I think I said it all before, but I just have a few, few items uh, I have to touch base on. Um, with the approval of my colleagues, I would like uh, City Council to send a letter to the City Solicitor requesting the 800, 1,100, 1,100 blocks of Mulberry Street be posted as no parking and the parking areas there removed for safety reasons. Okay? Mm hmm Okay. Um, meter management agreement. I've noticed in the paper uh, that several times it's stated it would be between the administration and city council would get together on it. Has anyone heard from the administration on the bids or were, you know, I mean, are they gonna sit down with us or? I haven't heard anything. I know that um, we had received copies of the bids that I asked to be forwarded to you since yes. you had been the point person on this. And I, I was just curious if it was going to come to us as legislation as usual without any Well, input. we, I, I would suggest that you contact um, the mayor and uh, make, schedule a time to sit down with either him or um, Ryan McGowan to review the bids and um, provide input in terms of who will be selected. But again, it's not city council who makes the selection ultimately. It's the mayor that makes the selection. Uh, then I imagine the legislation would be sent to us for approval. So, you know, I think probably the best direction you can take at this point is to schedule that, bring the uh, proposals with you sure. and review them with one of those administrators and and let them know what your thoughts are on this because I know you have followed this more carefully than anyone else on council for four years nearly four years now okay thank you I, I was just curious if anybody had heard anything other than <coughs> no just I'll that the bids were advice. received that you know, I requested a copy of them. We received that. I wanted you to take a look at it. Sure. And uh, that's as far as we have progressed. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my colleagues have spoken. I, don't, I haven't really said anything about the food trucks. Uh, I was just hoping they'd bring me some samples. <laughs> 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 but uh, they come in empty-handed tonight. <laughs> um, no, I do. I, I believe in free enterprise. I think it's great, you know, that a city like this can have variety like that. And I, I think most people, even the business owners, do appreciate it. And, and, and I would hope, I, I know there was progress made today, that uh, come next week we'll have, a, you know, something that's amicable to, 
to everybody because I think we need that variety. I mean, with, with, with competition, you know, there's price wars and everything. Maybe they'll have a half price sale someday or whatever. But just like what happened with our meter bids, you know, our mm -hmm. meter management bid, you know, there was no bids before. It was 100 and what, 125,000. Now it's cut in half. So that's what free enterprise and competition is all about. But you see McDonald's set up next to Burger King, set up next to Wendy's, they all thrive. And, and that's what I like to see here. And uh, I do appreciate it, but that's where I'm coming from. And just lastly, um, we're, we're talking, I, I forgot to ask Mrs. Abley, maybe it doesn't even affect her, but we passed legislation probably over a year ago for funding for blight tracking software for our city planner. And I haven't heard anything about that. I was just wondering what the status is, what what progress we have, what it's for, if it's part of their, you know, I mean, it, they should all work together on it. We should know where the blighted problems are. So if we could send a letter to uh, Mr. King and just ask him what the status is on the uh, blight tracking software that we uh, financed back a while ago. And to my wife and my mother and all the mothers out there, I would like to wish you all a happy Mother's Day. And that's all I have. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, uh, very briefly tonight, just to give everyone a snapshot of where the city is right now, uh, the cash balance of the city as of May 6th is $11.7 million, and we have $23,000 in accounts payable. Secondly, uh, I'm very glad that Mr. Pardon? Oh, okay. I, th I thought that you uh, had a comment. No, it's a sidebar. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm very glad that Mr. McGough spoke to uh, Leslie Collins about the meeting with the food trucks. In fact, I, I wanted to uh, speak with her and to get more information of how that went, and I'm very glad that the meeting was amicable. Like Mr. McGough, I believe it, it would be foolhardy to vote on the legislation as it is in seventh order. So. I'll vote on the legislation tonight, but I think that we should wait uh, until there's a compromise set in stone before we move further with the legislation in seventh order. I did have a conversation with the mayor regarding an issue that several speakers have brought up being that the weather is starting to get warmer, and that's swimming pools. And as you know, last year, uh, the only pool that was open in the city was Naog, and th that's a shame. Uh, a lot of uh, underprivileged children and a lot of uh, residents who like to use the pools uh, suffered as a result. And this year, uh, after speaking with Mayor Doherty, he has agreed and uh, is confident that we're going to receive a $31,000 grant to open two of the swimming pools. He um, specified that Weston Park and Weston Field would be two that were open, and I said uh, that we should open more, and we should open up the pools that aren't in need of serious repairs. And two of the major pools in the city are um, the pool at Connell Park, which serves South Side, and Novembrino Pool, which serves West Side. And I spoke to the mayor more about the issue, and we came to a, an agreement that we could use uh, money from the UDAG repayment account to open up these pools. It's about 15.5 a pool to maintain and pay for lifeguards and whatnot, and pool chemicals to last throughout the summer months. So with my colleague's agreement, and the mayor said that he would be agreeable to this as well, if we could send a letter to uh, the law department to have them draft legislation to um, use money from the RERI account to open up Novembrino Pool and also the pool at Connell Park. And 
that's that will be opened this year so and we I'm very the funding for that yeah. through the CDBG program and I know part of the reason part of the reason why they said it was closed last year was because he still wanted to move forward with the splash park and it seemed that the residents of the city and I, I think most of us on council were against that as well mm-hmm well thank yes you, Mr. thank you Mr. Joyce oh. for bringing that to the mayor no problem and I'm very glad that that's something that the mayor is willing to do and I'm glad to see that they'll be swimming in the city this year and that's Indeed. all thank you um, good evening I have several items to address first the Scranton treasurer's tax sale is scheduled for Monday June 3rd 2013 the sale will be advertised in two newspapers of general circulation and the legal newspaper published and printed in Scranton on May 13th, May 20th, and May 27th, 2013. The deadline for posting on premises is Friday, May 24th, 2013. Second, uh, City Council received a letter and supporting documents from a city resident regarding a number of properties in the 400 block of Clay Avenue on which delinquent taxes dating back several years appeared to be owed as of April 26, 2013, and significant renovations are occurring despite stop work orders issued by the city zoning officer. Scranton City Council asks Mr. Seitzinger, LIPS Director, to provide copies of any and all permits that have been issued in the last seven months and any and all applications filed in the last seven months for the properties listed on the documents Council received. And Mrs. Craig, please forward that letter to Mr. Seitzinger, ASAP. In addition, please forward a copy of all information provided by the resident to the members of the Scranton Zoning Board and its solicitor for their review and recommendations. Request replies on or before May 28, 2013. Third, I recently received emails from owners of ice cream trucks and from Jill Murren, who oversees the South Scranton Farmers Market requesting special provisions in the proposed ordinances related to both. For example, will ice cream trucks be allowed to stop for children on a city street who are standing less than the designated footage from a brick and mortar establishment? Also, Ms. Murren stated that the farmers participating in the South Side, West Side, and Courthouse Square farmers markets can ill afford the annual fees and sell their good and they sell their goods only once weekly at the same time however we have a very large and quite successful farmers market located off Albright Avenue which operates far more frequently therefore uh, Mrs. Craig I'd ask you to contact the legal department regarding these issues in relation to the proposed ordinances Please inquire if such businesses are included in the ordinances, and if so, does the administration recommend adjustments to the legislation? Fourth, despite the opinion of Attorney Fredrickson, the resolution requesting the Lackawanna County Commissioners to establish a policy for the Assessor's Office to commence reviewing the status of all properties qualifying for exemption from property taxation under the Institutions of Purely Public Charity Act is included in seventh order on tonight's agenda for final approval. City Council Solicitor Boyd Hughes strongly disagrees with the opinion of Attorney Fredrickson and has advised Council to approve the legislation. Further, Solicitor Hughes intends to send a letter to the appropriate county offices and Mayor Doherty in conjunction with this legislation requesting an investigation of specific tax-exempt properties. Solicitor Hughes will comment further on this matter during next week's City Council meeting. 
At the same time, the county assessor's office continues its long-standing hearing process of lowering tax assessments for businesses and residents countywide. While it has failed to conduct a complete countywide property tax assessment, reassessment since 1967. The Office of Tax Assessment in Allegheny County conducts a countywide tax exempt review every three years and is in the process of performing one at this time. But Lackawanna County Attorney Fredrickson states to review the status of every nonprofit in the city, now just in the city, not the county, would probably take three years. If a review of tax exempt city property would require three years, should we assume that a countywide tax reassessment would take over 10 years since nonprofits alone own 33% of Scranton properties? Such excuses are extremely disappointing to the taxpayers of Scranton. City Council is seeking a fair review process for all tax exempt properties to ensure that all properties continue to comply with the law governing exemption. Some may own properties that are no longer used or may be newly utilized for commercial purposes. The city cannot conduct property tax assessments. The county has the responsibility to get the ball rolling to review the status of tax exempts, particularly since it refuses to conduct countywide tax reassessments. Failure to act hurts the taxpayers by allowing incorrect tax exemptions and antiquated tax assessments in the community to become the burden of the taxpayers. Finally, I have one citizen's request for the week. According to Mr. Zahorski, the Scranton DPW damaged his property on Parallel Drive. Please send a second request to Mayor Doherty and DPW Director Dewar to address this issue as soon as possible. And that's it. 5B, authorizing and improving the right-of-way acquisition of a portion of city-owned property located on the 100 block of Harrison Avenue, 8,711 square feet in the city of Scranton to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, PennDOT, as per PennDOT's offer to purchase and summary of just compensation and to authorize the mayor and other appropriate city officials to enter into an agreement of sale to purchase said property for the sum of $21,400 for the purpose of removing the Harrison Avenue Bridge and replacing the Harrison Avenue Bridge. At this time, I'll entertain motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Um, does anyone know where these funds uh, are going to be spent or where they're going to go? No. Okay. I'm assuming they're going into the budget. Would would anyone um, object to having the money earmarked for additional road paving or repairs in the city? Not at all. Not at all. Mrs. Craig, can we please uh, make that request as well to the mayor and the business administrator? I have it written down. I, I'm, I'm curious, would it, uh, could it be added to the legislation? And then you would get? I believe we can ask um, Solicitor Hughes to draft an amendment stating that. Yeah, that would be even better. Mm -hmm. Because then it would be legally binding. So if you would take note of that, please, Mrs. Craig, and upon his return, um, we'll discuss that with him. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, transferring a temporary construction agreement of city-owned property located in the 100 block of Harrison Avenue to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, PennDOT, 
for the construction of the removal of the Harrison Avenue Bridge and installation of a newly constructed Harrison Avenue Bridge for the sum of $7,000. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A. Reading by title, file of council number 21, 2013, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials to enter into a sub-grantee and cooperation agreement with the Scranton Public Library for Keystone Recreation, Park and Conservation Fund grant in the amount of $500,000 for repairs to the historic Albright Memorial Library. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Uh, do we receive answers to the questions our solicitor had uh, asked on this no. contract? No, we uh, did not. As of today, no. no. I had checked yesterday and nothing had been sent. Uh, I'll, I'll I vote to advance it to seventh order. but. Yeah, I think maybe under those circumstances, rather than suspending the rules tonight and passing it into seventh, uh, we'll have to allow it to take its uh, traditional path. Uh, and Mrs. Craig, if you could please send um, a memo to Mr. Finnerty explaining what occurred uh, that we had asked for a clarification to the legislation from the law department. Uh, it was not sent, and as a result, uh, the, the legislation could not be passed in two readings, and we look forward to passing it next Thursday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 22, 2013, an ordinance, creating and establishing special city account number 02229605, entitled Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Fund Grant for the receipt and disbursement of grants from the Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Grant Funds in the amount of $500,000 for repairs to the historic Albright Memorial Library. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6C, reading by title, file of council number 23, 2013, an ordinance amending section 34-1 34-8, 34-9, and 34-13A of the Code of the City of Scranton governing peddling and soliciting within the City of Scranton. You've heard reading by title of item 6C. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6C pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6D, reading by title. File of Council Number 24, 2013, an ordinance repealing File of the Council Number 112 of 2009 as amended, entitled Establishing the Duties, Responsibilities, and Qualifications of the City Health Inspector, providing for the payment of an annual license fee for public eating or drinking establishments within the City of Scranton, establishing annual application and renewal requirements imposing certain duties upon the Deputy Director of Inspections and the City Health Inspector, providing guidelines for revocation and reinstatement of licenses, and providing for imposition of penalties. You've heard reading by title of item 6D. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6D pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6E, reading by title, file of council number 25, 2013, an ordinance establishing the duties, responsibilities, and qualifications of the city health inspector, providing for the payment of an annual license fee for public eating and drinking establishments within the city of Scranton, 
establishing annual application and renewal requirements, imposing certain duties upon the Director of Licensing, Inspections, and Permits, and the City Health Inspector, providing guidelines for revocation and reinstatement of licenses, and providing for imposition of penalties. You've heard reading by title of item 6E. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6E pass reading by title. Second. On the question? Yes, I'd just like to reiterate that these three um, pieces of legislation will require another reading and that hopefully we have um, proposals from the meetings between the vendor, uh, food truck vendors and the restaurants um, prior to the next reading so that we can consider those as part of the legislation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6F, reading by title, file of council number 26, 2013, an ordinance. Amending file of council number 22, 2006, entitled, authorizing and approving the designation of parking spaces for certain city of Scranton personnel in and along Dick's Court the parking area in the rear of the City of Scranton Municipal Building and a parking lot along Mulberry Street adjacent to the Scranton Fire Headquarters and authorizing the City of Scranton Police Department to enforce the parking designation as reflected in the attached schematic. You've heard reading by title of item 6F. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6F pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A. For consideration by the Committee on Rules, for adoption, resolution number 21, 2013, requesting the commissioners of Lackawanna County to establish a policy for the Assessor's Office of Lackawanna County to immediately commence reviewing the status of all properties qualifying for exemption from property taxation under the Institutions of Purely Public Charity Act. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Yes, I, I, I would like to say something on this. Um, I'd just like to remind people that your portion, the, the county portion of your tax bill is greater than the city portion of your real estate tax bill. And for the county to refuse to address the issues that we presented to them, I think is unconscionable. You pay your taxes to the county as well, and they should respond and do the work that they're required to do. I agree. Well said. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. Rock? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Not everybody. Many people don't. I'm talking about 20% who develop post-traumatic death disorder. Um, so what kind of treatment? The good news is there is treatment for that. And it can be treated. Not everybody become chronically ill. And there, I don't want to repeat all of these things if you want to ask questions about these therapies. Most of them relates to, the most important thing is to have somebody to talk. So narration of their problems and being able to trust, that's very important. The other thing is that in the military, they try to do, build on the so-called group cohesion because they are like military units. So they try to have the camaraderie, they have little camps, and they do all sorts of very interesting treatments, all cognitive therapy, uh, other type of therapies, acupuncture, meditation, relaxation, 
physical rehabilitation, occupation therapy. So, so uh, there are these uh, signature programs in the military which actually try to build on the cohesiveness. In fact, PTSD is, predict is, PTSD is less in this group in, the, in veterans who have experienced a cohesive team while they were in the combat zone. There are a number of medication and antidepressants and adenoreceptor antagonists. That's a blood pressure medication uh, 